crazy. Wow. So tonight, guys, buckle up. It's going to be an incredible night because tonight we are talking about witchcraft. We're talking about the power of witchcraft, overcoming witchcraft, fighting witchcraft. Guys, this is a real thing. I want you guys to think about in the chat, the 4,300 of you, when's the last time you heard about, well, unless you go to our churches, but other than ours, when you heard about witchcraft from behind the pulpit, it's a real thing. The reality is, as we gather tonight... And we're gathering and preaching. Also, witches and warlocks gather. They also gather together to fight the church, to fight the body of Christ. And I really believe as the body of Christ, we need to start getting serious about this. We need to stop taking spiritual warfare so lightly, and we need to start engaging on the front lines. I want to tell you guys, once a month gatherings, Bible studies at Starbucks are not enough to overcome the powers of hell. We need to take deliberate serious, spiritual warfare serious. God is doing a new thing right now all over yes. the world. And so I really believe that right now the body of Christ is waking up. I believe right. it's getting to the point now where you can't uh, fight this. You can't debate this. You can't argue this. You can't ignore this. I know many pastors are mad because there's 4,500 people watching this, but we're training up the body of Christ. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are spiritual, mighty through God for the pulling down is a stronghold. So some of you might be in here tonight and you say, you're building the enemy's kingdom when you talk about witchcraft. And that's the same thing they told Jesus. They said, you're casting out demons by the power of Satan. And Jesus said, a kingdom divided can't stand. So I want to tell you guys, the only person being humiliated tonight when we talk about witchcraft is the the devil. The devil hates when we expose his kingdom. He hates when we expose yeah. his works. And Halloween is on Sunday. They call October the witches month. And so I really believe it's time for the body of Christ. We need to warn people. We need to talk about this. We need to discuss this. And so guys, let's jump into this. First of all, let's talk about Halloween. This Sunday, Halloween, we're doing mass deliverance. We're casting out demons. Um, what is your guys' kind of thought? I love what you said, Vlad, in a recent video. Well, it's an older video you posted about Halloween, why we don't celebrate Halloween, and why we're not just religious about it, but it's a, it's a big deal, this this holiday called Halloween. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, because people will say, well, Christmas also has some pagan uh, roots, and so is East, uh, so is the, you know, the word Easter and other things. But for us, it's not about just the fact that it has pagan roots, the fact that it still has pagan practices. You know, mm. um, I mean, originally, and Isaiah, you had a really, you have a really good video where you um, go deeper into the history of how it started and, you know, how they were practicing, um, you know, the, the, the Celtics and others were doing this thing and people would, um, I mean, a lot of the demonic people, people in the demonic realm, and I've talked to ex-Satanists, they really believe that on the 31st of October, until now, that the veil between the spiritual world and this world is the thinnest, and the mm. demons would travel from one realm to another realm, which explains why people would dress up as demons, because demons would come into this realm and start attacking people, and people would dress up as demons so the demons won't attack them, and these practices still continue, and so it promotes darkness, it promotes death, it promotes everything that Christianity we don't stand for, and therefore, you know, we expose the works of darkness, we don't go and celebrate that, we mm. go and, you know, cast out demons, we heal the sick, and, and I, you know, sometimes I meet with pastors and or leaders, and they're like, yeah, you know, this this whole deliverance thing is spooky. This whole crazy thing is spooky. And then, you know, they go and they dress, dress up as a demon, um, you know, on Halloween night and Come stuff. On. So this weekend, I know that um, Apostle is doing a deliverance night. I know that Pastor Mike and Isaiah, you guys are going to be doing deliverance night. We're actually bringing a deliverance conference to Portland area for three days as Friday, Saturday Come and on. Sunday to really just go head on against the kingdom of darkness and to bring the kingdom of light. So good. You know what I realize, you know what I realize is that this particular Halloween is very unique because it mm. falls actually on a Sunday. Mm. Yeah, wow. it's it it not God instigating a fight with the Philistines, then I don't know what is. So I want to encourage wow. every pastor. Okay, let's say you're not into the deliverance thing as the way that we are, but at least this Sunday. Come on. This come Sunday, on. God is saying at least without even being spooky. Come Everyone on. in your church will know, well, it kind of makes sense. Today's Halloween is on a Sunday. Even your least deliverance spiritual warfare members would at least accept the fact that this Sunday is an opportunity for the churches, which is why we've decided, which is why Pastor Mike decided, at least Let's in New go. York City, that we were going to capitalize on the fact that God has given us an opportunity to be able to use Halloween and on Sunday to merge it to for the two to be able to help God's people and those that need deliverance 
that are not saved to come to know Jesus and expose Halloween. So this is a great opportunity for those of you that are watching to get involved and do something this Sunday. And even if you are at the last minute, like, well, I wasn't planning on doing it. Listen, the Holy Spirit will give you in four days what to do this Sunday. Come on. Just yeah. expose Come on. the devil, cast the devil out, help people, expose the works of darkness, and mm -hmm. you're going to see the amount of people that are going to get delivered and saved and set free this Sunday, at least this Sunday. Come on. Come on, preach that. Listen, the only Halloween bash I want to be a part of is bashing the devil's Come on. face in Come on. for everything he did to us, everything he thought he was going to get away with. I mean, here's the thing. Every team has a mascot. The mascot represents the values of the team. And so when your mascot is a demon or a devil on Halloween, that should tell you what team this holiday is orientated towards. And the Halloween bash we're going to have amongst us four is just bashing the devil's face in. And so, you know, we do deliverance all around the world. We see the enemy being exposed. And a lot of times when you've only seen it represented as a cartoon, as a character, as fiction, you, you know, you don't realize the reality of it. And so for people who think we're overreacting, why can't the kids just have their trunk or treat? Why can't we just deal with the funk? Let's, let's, mm. like, let's compromise it. It's like when you've seen what we've seen, you know, you think, I think about this all the time, especially as a pastor, but in the Old Testament, the consequence for witchcraft was literally death. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, why would we take something that mm -hmm. came, the consequence for it was death, and then mm -hmm. several generations later, we're playing with it. And so I don't want to oh, be in that camp, not this year. And I love <laughs> so. when people say, uh, Mike, they say, oh, well, if I don't do it, my kids, I know there's a lot of them in the chat, my kids are going to miss out. And from the, I, I promise you, this is something you want your kids to miss out on. You want your kids to miss out on glorifying darkness, glorifying the enemy, because if you teach them, and listen to me, everyone in the chat here, 5,300, this is incredible. If you teach them to glorify darkness on one day of the year, at what point do you, uh, at what point do you tell them it's not okay the other days? Like we could take yeah, one day on. where we glorify death, we glorify lust, we glorify ghouls and goblins and death and scaring people and candy and all this type of stuff. And then throughout the rest of the year, do you just tell them, well, we don't celebrate the devil throughout the rest of the year. It's just on Halloween. And so this is about raising a standard as the body of Christ. This is about manning up as the body of Christ, not blending into culture. And this, this happened a century ago. They were blending in with culture. The Protestants that were coming were building the church. They were allowing these pagan rituals to come in. They were allowing mm -hmm. this into the church and nobody was standing guard. Nobody was a watchman on the wall. And sadly, the pastors that are supposed to be watchmen on the wall are dressed up as skeletons are dressed up as you know <laughs> father abraham it's like we're doing the same thing and this is what we're good at man i feel like preaching tonight we're good at, at christianizing demonic things mm -hmm. we're good at oh as long as we make it like god as long or how about we just don't partake in it you know the bible mm -hmm. said when God would bring the children, that God would bring the people out of captivity, he would always say, uh -huh. do not do the witchcraft, the medium, the yeah, sorcery that they it. did, that mm -hmm. that culture did. So the culture did it, and God was saying, don't try to Christianize it and say, well, we're mm -hmm. just going to do this harvest thing or the trunk or treat thing and give the kids candy so they don't miss out. No, there needs to be a separation, a line drawn in the sand where your children know we live different. We don't live like everybody else. We don't live like the culture. We don't act like the culture. The music the culture listens to, we don't listen do so you need to draw that hard standard because the lines are so blurred in the church right now that we've taken the things that are ungodly and unrighteous and we've allowed them in the church we've celebrated them and so on sunday pastors are going to celebrate darkness instead of expelling darkness and here and here's the thing guys let me just say this because I'm, I'm on a roll here let me just say this we're we're the crazy ones like think about this guys we're the ones that are too radical like we're the ones that are crazy standing for righteousness but the guys that are indulging and celebrating Halloween, they're not crazy. They're the normal average, you know, everybody else is doing it. And friend, if everybody else is doing something, that's a good sign they're on the broad road. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. If you're doing something and you go, well, everybody else is doing it, that means that's the broad mm -hmm. road. And Jesus said, there's a narrow road and there's a broad mm -hmm. road and the narrow road is difficult. I know mm -hmm. it's difficult to tell your kids, oh no, we're not going to church because they're doing trunk or treat and we don't do that. Or we're not going to church because they are celebrating. The guys, I get it, but understand something God condemns witchcraft God condemns magic and for you I know you think oh it's not a big deal but here's the problem it's a big deal to God it's a big deal yeah. to scripture and so 
it's not like let's try to change the Bible to fit into our narrative. It's let's change our lives to fit into the Bible. And either God's wrong about witchcraft or I'm wrong about witchcraft. And I don't find any verse that says like, oh, it's not a big deal. God is very strong. The Bible describes witchcraft as a work of the flesh. So just like idolatry and just like sexual immorality and all these things that all of you in the chat are like, brother Isaiah, we would never do. The Bible puts witchcraft in the same category and it's not rare like you think. It's not just in the movies, as you said, Mike, like it's not some mystical thing. There's real witches right now that are practicing witchcraft that are going against the church. And so I think we need to be more vigilant. Our eyes need to be open. Why do you guys think, um, I guess you'd say, the church is so disconnected from the idea that there is a war going on and like there's real witches attacking the church, like spiritually we're talking, right? There's real warlocks that are speaking death over Christians and believers and we are actually their target. So why do you think there's such a disconnect between the church d realizing that and talking about that and that actually going on and happening right now? Well, let me let me just kind of interject here and just say this is that just so that the pastors and the and the Christians that are listening to understand how serious the the church the warfare is for the last not last week but the two weeks before and then like for the last maybe month we have had witches trying to get into Come the on. church on our Sunday yeah. services last Sunday wow. we had to have a security staff meeting with our retired police officers that oversee our security and, and, and you know and staff department to be able to beef up security in God's house because about two weeks ago um, there was a there was a witch talking about that she was going to sue the church because we were showing some sort of discrimination by not allowing them to come in. Now here's the thing: we did allow them to come in because it's kind of hard to gauge people as they come in in the middle of a pandemic. It's just so many people kind of coming in, but they were disruptive. They were acting up in the services. They ended up slipping into the back of the church had a conversation with my wife to, uh, you know I was talking about do you know who I am and my wife was like uh, no I don't even know you to the point that we had to like literally take the person downstairs escort them out the building it turned into the thing where we got in, almost got into a fight you know like literally every every week now I understand that the anointing is in the house and the, the very religious will say well the presence of God was there that wouldn't happen then why in the Old Testament they had what is called temple guards all over the Temple of Solomon where they had what was called temple guards, which means that the house of God needed to be guarded. All right. So just letting everyone know, this thing is very, very, very real. And what's driving them is this woke cancel culture theology that's being promoted that now they feel uh, we're going to sue this church because now you're discriminating against us and we have the right to worship. It. No, you have the right to worship. But you have the right to worship in a Christian house the Christian way, the way that God prescribed in the Bible. So this is what we're really dealing with. And I think the reason why most churches don't know that this is going on is because they haven't experienced it yet. They go in their little hour and a half service, they come in and they come out and there is no engaging with the people. It's the protocol, it's the, it's the time, it's, it, it, you know, and then it's in and out. And so they're not really knowing what's really going on into the services. The only thing, the best awakening that can happen is by way of experience or rude awakening that it just starts happening. That Now you have to literally address the thing. So I think it starts there. They don't know what's going on because they haven't seen it going on and their church protocols and policies don't allow it to be expressed so that way they can see what's actually going on in their church services. So it's basically ignorance. Ignorance is one of the main reasons why most churches are not seeing this level of spiritual warfare that's going on in the churches right now. I think that we're seeing the spiritual warfare. We, a lot of our people are feeling it. Um, if you look at That's what's it. been happening in the last month alone, I mean, a lot of us, even we can testify of some yeah, emotional attacks, uh, accidents, physical infirmities that we're battling and talking to a lot of you. I mean, those of you who are watching or rewatching this, I mean, drop number one, if you've been feeling like, hey, this Come month, on. like never before, I've been there, has been, it, bro. Th there has been a warfare. Yeah, we've been, yeah, it's been it. crazy. And so, um, I mean, we had a week of fasting last week and we're going again into it tomorrow. And I know uh, Apostle Alexander, his church is doing it this week. There's been an intense spiritual warfare that is taking place, and I believe that we are on the winning side, and we're about to see a shift. I think something is going to loose this weekend 
in our churches and in our events yes. where we're going to see breakthrough. This Goliath that's been shouting and that's been cursing and, and speaking all of these things, we're going to get his take his head off and we're going to bring the victory and we're going to have spoil that we're going to bring to the kingdom of God. In Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 18, um, there's this verse that, what witchcraft does to churches and to Christians because a lot of Christians are like yeah you know this doesn't affect me I'm under the blood yes uh, I mean legally speaking positionally speaking that's 100 percent but I want right. you to listen to what Ezekiel 13 18 says and say thus says the Lord woe to the women who sew magic charms on their sleeves to make mm. veils for the heads of people of every height to hunt souls will you hunt the souls of my people and keep yourselves alive I mean, look what God is saying. He's saying these people were hunting wow. the souls, not the spirits, because our spirits are redeemed. Our spirits are sealed by the Holy Spirit. But witchcraft is hunting the souls of my people. God is saying this is taking place. And then in verse 20 and 22 and 21, he says, thus says the Lord God. And I feel like this is a word for somebody that is watching right now that you're feeling oh, like you're being hunted. You feel like something is on your Say tail. It. There's something that is chasing you. Something that literally, if it's not one thing, then it's another. If it's not an accident, then you you got sick. Then if it's not your kids, then it's your husband. If it's not your husband, then it's your job. It's like this just can't, this cycle can't end. This hunting of witchcraft that is coming at you. And this is the word of the Lord that he said to Ezekiel 13 verse 20. And he says, thus says the Lord God. Behold, I am against your magic charm. See, God is against the witchcraft that is coming against you. He says, by which you hunt souls like birds. I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go. Come on, somebody drop that in the chat. God will deliver me from that witchcraft. It's going to happen tonight. And the souls like you hunt birds. I will also tear off your veils and deliver my people out of your hand and they shall no longer be as prey in your hand. And then you shall know the that I am your God. I really felt that even in the first two two weeks of October, this intense spiritual warfare that is taking place. And I've, as I've listened to different men of God who do deliverance, who practice deliverance, and they say a lot of times around this time, it's not a coincidence that witches and warlocks, they're practicing the Halloween and people in Satanism, they really rely. This is their Christmas and Easter combined Come because on. something is happening in the spiritual realm. But we are not on defensive. We're not going into this weekend saying that the devil owns 31st of October. The devil owns nothing. Nothing. Come on. And God oh, no. owns the day. God owns October. God owns our life. And we're going to give the devil a headache. And we will win. And this month will end as God wants it to end, not the way the witches, the warlocks. And God will hunt those witch witchcrafts and, and charms and, and sorcery and all kinds of curses that are aimed at Christians. The weapons of the enemy will make malfunction and we're going to see the victory in Jesus name. Come on, somebody, man, I feel oh, like I'm preaching already. Come on. <laughs> so good. I, I believe right now, as you're saying that, Vlad, that God is breaking demonic assignments, demonic Come plans, on. curses, hexes, spells. You know, when you're talking about Ezekiel, I had this down in my notes 13 tonight. It's literally describing voodoo dolls. They were making voodoo yeah. dolls yep. of mm -hmm. the people of God. And so, yeah. the, the, again, like you just said, the target of witchcraft is the believer according to scripture. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to target someone to make them fall in love. They were targeting the body of Christ. They were targeting the believers. And God says, I'm going to stop the plan. I'm going to stop the attack. And tonight, in Jesus' name, we do declare that every demonic assignment, every demonic attack, yeah, I even fell over people's bodies, oh, are being broken in Jesus' yes. name. You know, I had a, a pinched nerve, all of you guys know, because I posted about it. I, guys, I honestly, I'm not the guy, I never say, oh, I was under an attack. None of I don't, I don't even give the devil a thought of it, but I really felt like God was saying, this is an attack, because I was literally right. like picking up a hose, and I, my neck went out for three days, I couldn't even barely move, and I believe it was a demonic assignment, but then the Lord revealed to me, Isaiah, what war have you ever heard of where there was never uh, an attack that was never well, backlash yeah. that was never so it's not just like oh why am i going through this but it's like no i'm in a battle i'm in a war i'm on the offense we've been all year now i could say this because i know all four of us we have been all year sticking our pointer finger right in the devil's eye every time we yeah. go live we've been going after witches going after warlocks going after demons binding spirits and the lord's like you really think you're just going to march right in and keep poking the devil and never have right. anything happen? And so all the pastors 
and listen that are like oh i don't get under attack it's because you're soft it's because you're not threatening the devil the devil you're not even on the devil's radar like in acts right. the bible says peter i know paul i know but who are you in other words this is what they were saying you your name didn't come up in our board meeting like the demons were saying we had a board meeting and your name wasn't even relevant like there's no wanted poster of your face in hell and i can guarantee this is not pride or arrogance all four of us have a poster in hell or i wouldn't want to say hell because that's not even where the devil rules from in the second heaven there's a wanted poster there's an attack but guess what we are more than conquerors in christ yeah. we are more than overcomers yes. the bible says that we have overwhelming victory so we don't just win we win like 100 points to zero every single time but we also are not ignorant of the battle we also are not ignorant guys like we just before we went live on here i just said hey guys i think we should all get together maybe like once every few months and just talk about what we're going through talk about personal stuff talk about youtube and strategy just because we're all coming under attack but we're fighting back and this is come on help me preach holy ghost come this on. is the this is the lost art of the church ready two words mm. fight back Back. And this is a book mm. Pastor Vlad has. I, I think we've God. I think we've lost this this idea that we could actually fight back. Like we don't have oh, to just yeah. be a doormat. Oh, the devil's attacking me. Well, guess what? I'm attacking back in Jesus' name. Yes. Somebody yes. needs to fight back tonight. Somebody needs Come to on, challenge man. the forces of darkness and say, "Devil, not today." But it mm. starts with you acknowledging it's real. It starts with you acknowledging witchcraft is advancing against the church and the church needs to fight back. Uh, uh, pa Pastor Mike or P Apostle Pagani, I know one of you guys, still, I know you're chomping at the bit here. There's so much anointing all over Come this on. broadcast today. And I'm just, I, I know we we can all feel it right now. And we're about and to hit 7,000, by the way. Sorry, we're about to hit 7,000 viewers. Yes. You know, listen, this is the all-time record here. On dude, my Facebook now, dude. So y'all are crazy. Come on, Keep breakthrough sharing. in Jesus' name. You know why we're exposing the works of the enemy? I want to say this right now, and I want everybody to hear me say it. If you are not in a head-on collision with the devil, mm. it's because you're running in the same direction. Come on. And I'm just tell you straight up, like we are in a head-on collision with the enemy because we are opposed to his works. But I want to release a word, and I want to step into the prophetic dimension right now because the Lord showed me about the convergence of October 31st. It's here on Sunday as well. It's coming up. And I kept mm -hmm. thinking about 2 Kings chapter 23, King Josiah. Mm -hmm. King Josiah said, listen, Israel has been surrounded by all these cultures. And whatever you get close to, you eventually compromise to. And then when mm -hmm. you compromise, you conform. And then after you conform to it, you're constricted by it. And wow. so Israel was close to it. Then they were compromised by it. it. Then they conformed to it. Then they were constricted by it. And Josiah rose up with a different spirit. And he said, I'm going to eliminate all of these practices. And right. there's something about this mantle of Josiah that's Come on men and women of God. If that's you, just Come claim on. in the chat right now who are saying, yeah. we are going to utterly eliminate mm. anything and everything that's connected Come on. To, Come to the on. demonic realm. I'm telling you guys in the last two years since I've been broadcasting, I have Ghost. never seen more people throw away dream catchers, pagan Whoa. images in their homes, idol statues. I mean, we've got, we have filled dumpsters full of stuff around the world because I believe there's something like this Second Kings chapter 23, Josiah Mantle, where it's like enough compromise is enough. It's time to eliminate all compromise. So I'm just telling you guys, October 31st is a divine appointment. And I believe that there's there's many pastors and ministers that watch us. I, my DMs are flooded with you guys blowing me up after these sessions like this. I just want to tell you, if you feel the Holy Spirit leading you to change your programming Come for on. Sunday, yes. you, listen, do it. This is your permission. This is your confirmation. If you're like, I've never done a mass deliverance. I've never cast a demon out. I've never exposed the works of the enemy. God has set the T. The anointing is there. The Holy Spirit's your best a team member. And just let it rip this Sunday. Because this is, this is like a Josiah, King Josiah season. For those pastors that are, are really... They have have taken Pastor Mike's words very serious, and you and you and you've decided. You know what? I'm gonna change this the program for this Sunday, but I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just tell you something. God will meet you at your place of ignorance. Yeah, there you the go. First time, the first time that the disciples went out on their campaign pr mm -hmm. propagating the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Here's what I love about Luke chapter 10 and even Matthew chapter 10, and it's this: Jesus didn't go with them. 
Mm. What does this mean? The Holy Spirit does not micromanage. Mm. He allows you to learn as you obey. As you go out, you don't necessarily have to be an expert exorcist to be able to conduct deliverance. And I don't know what I'm going to say. This is the reason I believe that in Luke chapter 10, when the disciples came back, they were rejoicing, right? Wow. Here's what I think they were really rejoicing at. I think they were rejoicing that it worked. <laughs> that, 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 that it actually worked for them without Jesus there. So that they good. used his name and they were probably laughing. Because let me tell you something, me, Pastor Mike and Isaiah and, and, and Vlad, we, we kind of crack jokes at each other on different videos we see. And we be like, man, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing that day, but the Holy Spirit told me to do this. And, and how did it work for you? And sometimes we tell each other, man, I did it right there for the first time, you know, and it worked. What does this mean? Is I think they were, that they were rejoicing on the fact that the Holy Spirit, number one, he doesn't micromanage, he trusts you. Mm. He trusts you. Second, mm. it's not your name you're using. It's on, the name of Jesus. The come name on. of Jesus has to work even if you cast a demon out while you're stuttering. As long as you say that name and you say it in faith and your heart is motivated by love to see the person set free and you want to help your church get set free, God will fill in the missing gaps, pastor. Wherever you think you are deficient, that's what the parakletos is. He will safely take your service to the other side. So I'd say, Pastor, we're excited for you. We're mm. cheering for you. Come and on. write us an email and let us know all the yeah. testimonies Come of on. all the crazy stuff that happened when you use the name of Jesus and how God's people got delivered and set free. So good. And I want to say the number one sign that you are as a leader, a hireling, is when you don't go after the enemy is when you don't That's defend it. the people of uh -huh. God. And by the lack mm -hmm. of deliverance, the lack of spiritual warfare in the body of Christ, specifically, let's just talk about America because where we all live. I think it's unfair to talk about other places where you don't actually live. In America, mm -hmm. there's a hireling spirit culture in the church and pastors and leaders are there for a paycheck. God bless them. They're there to make a living. And so they don't honestly care about you dealing with a spirit of depression all week long. They don't honestly care that Monday through Saturday, you're thinking about taking your life. They don't honestly care right. that there's a generational curse of divorce or of abortion or of murder in your bloodline. Wow. And so when you come to them, they're like, uh, your, your need for deliverance, by the way, we just broke 7,000, praise the Lord, your need for deliverance and breakthrough and me having to spend my time to do deliverance on you or to do spiritual warfare with you or to break witchcraft off of you it doesn't fit in my schedule my hireling schedule of i got to prepare a message i got to download a sermon i got to preach on sunday and then monday i got to kind of just chill in the office for the week we need and we have to say it like this because we can't just keep acting like this isn't happening we need men and women of god that will get behind the pulpit and publicly renounce witchcraft, publicly. Yes. Imagine Sunday, Absolutely. I'm telling you, God showed me this in the beginning of 2020. He said, if you if you wanna yeah. see revival Isaiah in America, it's gonna take senior pastors getting behind the pulpit on their knees in front of their congregation and corporately repenting. Imagine this pastor, you yeah. have all your little Halloween stuff planned. You have all your little chunk or treat, all your stuff. And Sunday morning rolls around after you hear this broadcast and you get on your knees in front of your entire congregation and say, we are no longer going to tolerate Jezebel polluting the waters here. We are no longer oh, going to tolerate witchcraft and tolerate compromise and tolerate car carnality. And you in front of your congregation begin to renounce everything you've been indulging in and repenting for the lack of prayer in the church, Shh. repenting for the lack of passion, for repenting for not being the first one at the altar as the leader, repenting for not showing up to the Wednesday night prayer meeting as the pastor, repenting for not being the watchman on the I wall. Re renounce it to your whole church. Say, I'm, I'm, I've been sleeping on the wall. I'm the first one. I'm the first one to repent. I'm the, but we have this arrogance, this pride of like business as usual. And the pastors are not, are, are exempt from worshiping and praising and renouncing and repentance. And we need to start as leaders. We need to start which witchcraft hates humility witchcraft and pride are parallel spirits witchcraft and stubbornness we know this because of king saul are parallel spirits witchcraft and idolatry yep. are parallel spirits so we've allowed 
witchcraft in the church. So we are not on this broadcast with 7,000 of you saying, oh, there's witches attacking our church. We are on here saying we've allowed the spirit of Jezebel. We've allowed the spirit of Ahab. We've allowed these demonic spirits to pollute the waters. We've allowed them in the church. We've pet them. We've put them on our lap. We've tolerated them. But I feel the Lord is saying no longer will my church tolerate Jezebel any longer. Yes. It's time Lord. for some eunuchs to push her off the balcony. It's time for some Jehus to confront Jezebel and say, Jezebel, I'm not afraid of you up there on that balcony trying to threaten me and tell me oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and you I'm telling you it's time for someone to confront her stop running from it stop running from spiritual warfare I'm telling you there's a prophetic flow tonight stop running from the war this is not just pastors this is all believers in the chat and I feel the Lord saying stop running away from it and start running towards it guys there's a reason why there's no back piece to the armor of God the armor of God is only front because it's not made to be running from the battle you're not supposed That's to have it. armor in the back you're supposed to be running towards the battle. David said, I'm not going to run from Goliath. I'm running directly at Goliath. So I believe for many of you in the chat, it's time to confront your demons. I'm telling you, come on, y'all. Don't don't leave me hanging, chat. It's time for some of you to confront that witchcraft to whatever you're going through. Even me, when I was going through this or I felt like, oh, man, this is like spiritual. I was like, well, did I even put the armor on today did i get i mean have i been engaging have i got distracted have i got you know sometimes when we don't preach on deliverance all the time which i've been preaching on the book of revelation i'm like okay i gotta get back in the flow i gotta you know it's kind of like i put my sword down my sword got a little rusty because i'm preaching on something else but i feel the lord is saying sharpen up that sword come on holy ghost sharpen up that sword and get ready to cut some demons heads off because there, there's a real battle i don't care what anyone says there's a real battle and tonight god is giving giving you a sword, God sharpening it, and I believe it's time for us as believers to get on the front lines. I think when we don't go to battle, um, then we end up finding ourselves in bondage. If you remember David, the Bible says it was the season, it was the time for the kings to go to battle. And we are in this season right now where the kings, the queens, you are, Mm. those of you who are watching, you are the royal priesthood. Um, You are God's royal representation on this earth, and God has invited you into a battle and battle is not bad bondage is bad battle Mm. is good because battle means you are in the promised land as long as you are in egypt you need god to come and deliver you but see in the promised land god doesn't deliver you god empowers you Mm, god gives you the sword god gives you the ark god gives you the priest god gives you joshua he gives you jesus to lead the army and and jesus he is the he's our leader and he's leading us into a battle and a lot of times what people do is out of laziness or out of fear or out of hey i don't want to be the weird one i don't want to be viewed as the crazy one i don't want to get kicked out of this this fellowship or that community because the moment i start to confront the demonic the moment i start fighting the battles that the lord has anointed me to fight i might lose some connections and and king saul did that he didn't destroy god's enemy and then god removed the anointing and david how did david lose his purity the time that he was supposed to go to battle god didn't anoint him to sleep all day god anointed him to fight the enemies of israel and he decided that he was too old or too good or maybe i don't know what what the reason was and so he stays home and the bible says that he finds himself in bed he finds himself fighting battle now that he was not anointed to win and he lost himself to that battle and so sooner you're gonna be in the battle and you can choose to be in the battle that god called you to be against the witchcraft against the demonic plans and schemes or you can then find yourself in the battle trying to control your eyes with netflix or with TikTok or with some other websites and then finding yourself slipping and and finding yourself in bondage and then you'll need deliverance again and so we want to implore you we want to invite you that the battle is the place where the anointing is the battle is the place where the victory is the battle is the place where the spoil is the battle is the place where healings are at i mean we've seen people being healed people being delivered people have whose families have been restored when they got delivered the battle is the Come place on. of solution the battle yeah. is the place when you show up and you might not feel anointed you might not feel equipped it's not about your feeling it's about your fighting it's about mm. your mm. stepping in faith it's about you saying you know what i'm gonna come out and like david did when he told saul he says 
the way I won a battle against the lion and the bear, I threw myself in the battle, trusting mm -hmm. God will catch me. And he says, and the Lord delivered me from the paw of the okay. bear and the lion. But I watched the story and I'm like, but David, God didn't tell you to go whip the lion. You could have easily ran back to your father Jesse and said, Dad, one of the lions stole the sheep, but I, hey, I'm saved. No, David goes against the lion. He goes fighting against the lion, trusting God to deliver him from the problem he puts himself into. A lot of people, what they do is they have this wow. idea, God deliver me and I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fast. I'm not going to rebuke. I'm not going to confront. I'm not going to throw the dream catcher. So I'm looking at the chat and I see some people saying, you know, should I throw away the dream catcher? Come on. <laughs> I think you're watching our services already. You should know by now that stuff doesn't belong in your house. You should throw that away. It. You need to throw yourself into the battle. Get rid of the witchcraft. Get rid of the stuff. Get rid of the charms. Get rid of the crystals. Get rid of the horoscopes. Get rid of the things that connect you to the darkness. And listen and go start delivering people. Come on. Come on, bro. You're on a roll. Fire. Fire. I want, I want to say something too, for those of you that are like, how is witchcraft relevant to the New Testament believer? Because we've talked about the Old Testament and witchcraft was relevant. Galatians chapter 3. Oh foolish Galatians. This is Paul. So don't get mad at us. This is the Apostle Paul. Oh foolish Galatians. Who has cast an evil spell on you? For the meaning of Christ's death was made clear to you as you've seen a picture of his death on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. This is Paul saying this. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law of Moses? Of course not. You received the Spirit when you believed the message you heard about Christ. How foolish can you be? And this is what, this is the essence of witchcraft in the New Testament. How foolish can you be? After starting, listen chat, starting your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect in your own human effort? Okay, one of the symptoms of witchcraft in the New Testament believer is Christianity that strives to accomplish God's will using mm. human effort rather than the power of God. So anytime so you have a church, a believer, a place where we're leaning on talent, we're leaning on lights, we're leaning on smoke, we're leaning on personality and programs and parties yeah. and picnics wow. rather than the presence of God, Paul says, do you wow. really think human effort is going to accomplish living in the spirit? So this is witchcraft. The fact that most churches do not need the Holy Ghost. Like, think about this, okay? If you took the Holy Spirit out of most churches, what would change? What would change? Most, most churches, nothing would change. We would still have our 30 minute worship sets. We'd still have our five minute offerings. We'd still have our 15 minute sermons. We'd still have wow. our three minute altar calls where everybody repeats a prayer that's not in the Bible, where Jesus builds a tree house in our heart and nothing ever changes. And we go back living in our own vomit and we'd have churches normal. We wow. wouldn't even recognize the Holy Ghost has left the building. This is witchcraft. This is demonic. Oh, how do you figure? Galatians 3. He says, who cast a spell on you thinking that you can use human effort? Now, of course, it's a little bit different than it was in the, that church, but it's not much different in the fact that most churches don't need the Holy Spirit. Now, let's bring it down to the micro level. Do you need the Holy Spirit? Think about yeah. your life right now in the chat. Do you need the Holy Spirit? If I take the Holy Spirit out of your life, since we're all led by the Spirit, come on, all of us are on fire. We're all full of the Holy Spirit. We're all radical. We're all here. We speak in tongues. We believe in the fire. If I took the Holy Spirit out of your life for a week, would you survive? Would you notice? What would change in your life? Or would you still be at the same wow. thing at the nine to five? Friend, listen, you wow. have to get to a place, and I feel the Holy Ghost strong tonight. Yeah. This is just Come a prophetic night. You have to get to the place where you die without the Holy Ghost, where literally you Come think, on. I don't even know, Pagani, I don't even know how to be a father without the Holy Ghost. I don't even Come know, on. my wife wouldn't even like me without the Holy Ghost. In fact, when me and my wife got married, we joked because we always, when we first got married, we would talk about, you know, I was like this. And we always say this thing, we used to say it, of like, you would have never married me or you wouldn't have even dated me or even liked me in the world. Like, the only reason I like you and you like me is because of the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Ghost has done in our lives. So if I take him out of the picture, does your marriage work without the Holy Ghost? Does your Come ministry on. work without the Holy Ghost? Does your, see, because when you start casting out devils, you need the Holy Ghost. When you start healing yeah. the sick, you need the Holy Ghost. When you live well. that narrow road life, you need the Holy Ghost. When you live that holy consecrated life, you can't do it without the Holy Ghost. I cannot live a consecrated life without the Holy Ghost. So my fear is that witchcraft is functioning in our lives and functioning in our churches because we're trying to do 
with what the Holy Ghost can do through human effort. So we literally like, and I hate to expose everybody here, but we have like Go worship practice and those emotional parts. We, we just rail on those like, okay, this is where it gets emotional. Keep that key, right? Cause we know, come on, we know how to give the emotion stimulated. That's witchcraft because you're using human effort to stimulate mm. something that God is supposed to stimulate. So these mm. are all things that are happening right now in the body of Christ that we're overlooking that we don't realize is witchcraft. But when you look at scripture, again, we're not taking anything that's outside scripture tonight. And we look at witchcraft in scripture, it's clear that human effort is the driving force of the believer. I know I'm talking a lot here. I apologize. The driving force wow. of the believer Good. and the driving force of the American church. And this is why we're crying out for revival. This is yeah. why we're crying out for deliverance because we've gone so long without the Holy Spirit. And now it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Scriptures. And we worship yep. the Bible. We worship Ooh. the Son. We worship the Father. And the Holy Jeez. Spirit is nowhere Ooh. to be found. He's the forgotten God. But you, got, you guys got to remember, biblically, the Holy Spirit is, is God on the earth. Jesus is in yeah. heaven, y'all. I, I know a lot of in the chat are going to go, wait, what? <laughs> Jesus is in heaven. The Bible says, praying he's at the right hand of the father praying for you and jesus said i have to leave so that i can send the holy spirit and jesus said it's better that i'm not on earth he said because it's better if i'm not here because if i'm here the holy ghost isn't here so if i leave i'm gonna send the holy spirit so we have Mm -hmm. to guys we got to get back to the holy ghost we got to get back to the holy spirit breaks the power of witchcraft breaks the back of the enemy he's that enforcer he's that law enforcement that power of god on the earth that breaks the back of these spirits and tonight the holy spirit is breaking witchcraft in jesus name tonight the holy spirit is empowering someone i'll pass it to somebody here because i'm just i'm on fire man i'm sweating right here i think the holy ghost is moving another component of witchcraft and we see that in the new testament and you referred to that isaiah in the beginning of the stream in galatians chapter 5 verse 19 and 20 where the witchcraft is the work of the flesh you know we know the witchcraft could be a something that witches use to cast spells and curses Uh, it can operate through sorcery by charms objects and you know all kinds of things even drugs but the part that we don't like to talk a lot about that exists and we can allow that in our families we can allow that in our leadership and we can allow that in our churches is where you know we see that in the old testament where samuel says to to saul he says that the rebellion is a sin of witchcraft wow. and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry first samuel 15 23 and then in galatians where apostle paul in galatians he says that that sorcery uh, in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 and verse 20 is work of the flesh so this is not just uh, practicing charms and practicing you know voodoo dolls and all of the other curses mm-hmm. but where we can allow witchcraft and this manifests really in three main ways um, in domination in intimidation yeah. and in manipulation mm-hmm. it's when we take and these three forms of witchcraft in the flesh really is one word it's control because witchcraft is really it's controlling another person through any other means um than the holy spirit and actually you can't control a person through the holy spirit because the fruit of the spirit is self-control it's not people control god has never given Mm -hmm, humanity domination over another human being we were giving dominion over plants over trees over air over the sea but not over another human being even if that human being is not a believer we're still god never grants us dominion or authority over another human being in that regard so the moment you start to control and this can happen in marriage when a husband wants to control his wife or dominate over his wife that's witchcraft you might not go to a witch doctor you might not have a psychic on on a speed dial but if you are controlling your wife you are practicing witchcraft Mm. a wife if you are manipulating your husband you're practicing witchcraft yes children when they manipulate their child their parents through tears or when pastors we manipulate our staff or our leadership or if we are members and we are cornering the spiritual leadership in our church and we're trying to control and we're trying to threaten and some people use prophetic gift to really control the pastor some people use their finances yeah. to control leaders at church so and they don't realize that you're actually it doesn't matter how fast you speak in tongues you are in witchcraft and you need to repent of that because god can't bless mess you know that's rebellion that that stuff is is control freak the spirit of god gives us self-control he doesn't give us control of other people and so and i think we need to expose that kind of witchcraft as well so you know good. i was just preaching about that last sunday and this is like a perfect segue because 
control is often like it's the fruit, but the mm -hmm. root is fear. Mm -hmm. Behind all control right. is fear. So le let's talk about the modern witch starter pack, right? Because you said we got witches <laughs> and warlocks in the church. Come on. The starter pack is let me use prophecy to manipulate yep. my pastor. That's the modern witch starter pack in the church. Ouch. Then outside the church, you got let's manifest money. Let's have lotions, potions, crystals, and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But what is it? It's fear. Fear of yeah. finances has you lighting candles and buying crystals. So the fear leads to control. The most controlling people you've ever met are the most scared people you've ever met. Um, and so see good. what happens is like, and You're that's how you strong. get the, 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 the invitation to go visit the witch at Endor is Saul is afraid. He doesn't know how to lead Israel. And he's uh -huh. like, I've got to conjure up the ghost of Samuel to get information. Wow. So why do people go to psychic mediums? Why do they step into witchcraft? because of fear. Yeah. Instead of going to the one that's already established their future, planned mm -hmm. their future, wrote their future, they go to a psychic medium out of fear. And wow. so a faith-based decision, right? A, a decision to surrender to the Holy Spirit is actually losing your life, then you find it. Mm -hmm. So it's like to be, to be a true believer, you say, I'm actually gonna lose my life. I'm gonna release control and allow the Holy Spirit to, to do what only he can do. Oh, but then on the other end of the spectrum, it's like, I'm gonna operate in fear. And any fear-based decision turns into control and then control turns into witchcraft. So before wow. it's a candle, before it's a crystal, before it's sage, be, before it's all that, it's control. And before it's control, it's fear. And so, so what we're gonna, I'm, this is why this, this broadcast is so anointed. And I wanna shout out all the people in the comics cause I was cracking up reading it. I'm watching people say, I just jumped over to all four broadcasts Come broadcasts on. and hard and shared and liked. And like people are going <laughs> ballistic to get this thing to, to expose the works of the enemy yep. is that these things are not being talked about, but deliverance sure. is the children's bread. Yeah. And we are going to feast this Sunday. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Like it's gonna be amazing. Oh. Festival. Pagani, you want to jump in there? I was thinking about before fear, I believe desperation kicks in. Oh, oh say and, that. And desperation is an invitation. Anytime oh. you find out in scripture, like oh. with King Saul and others, mm -hmm. if you really read the text, you find that there was this desperation in which Saul couldn't wait uh, for Samuel to come and he ended up going in a different direction. Another mm -hmm. time, God took too long to talk to him, or God wasn't talking to him, and we mm -hmm. find desperation kicked in, and desperation opened a door to an invitation, and we see that King Saul ended up going uh, to encounter a witch. So I, I noticed that um, when believers wow. have not been taught the fruit of the spirit of patience, and where patience mm. has not become a a, a, a a virtue, according to Second Peter wow. chapter one, it says, "Add to your faith patience." Um, you find that desperation becomes uh, this crutch that the Christian tends to default to, which then in turn causes them to actually begin to lower their standard Good. and mm. say, "You know what? Maybe I should go to see a witch because apparently God is taking forever to kind of answer my prayer and I'm sick and wow. tired of prophetic utterances. Nothing's come in the past or whatever. I pray all the time. I don't feel nothing. Everybody feels God. I don't feel it. I've been asking him, you know, and they ended up, they end up turning because the church. Now, here's the thing. Um, when the wow. church doesn't uh, talk about like witchcraft, when the Christian becomes desperate, they will turn to witchcraft so yep. good. and mm -hmm. still attend their churches. Yep. So then yeah. you have Christians that are have mixed like new age witchcraft with mm -hmm. Christianity. So then they so, so so because they because they desire so so much to get in touch with God uh, or God to give them or God to speak to them, they'll end up tapping into astral projection and then say yeah. astral projection is the Holy Spirit. See what I'm saying? So they end up tapping into all of these. Christian or devices of Satan that mm -hmm. ends up becoming their lead way to their downfall. And it's simply because desperation has literally gripped them and desperation opens the door to an invitation and they end up going down that path. And the, 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 the average Christian that'll help get delivered, at least from the Latino black and brown churches, 
because of the struggle that you know minorities deal with there's a deep desperation there of nothing ever works out for us you know the system is designed to keep us down so there's a lot like it's funny because the american evangelical churches we have to prove like witchcraft is real but to the minority christian churches it's the actual the opposite they're christians and then they're christian witches like yep. they tap they completely go to the other end because there's this struggle of life that causes desperation and allow them to crash course into this into this life of witchcraft that on our end i have to actually deliver them from through the power of jesus obviously he's a deliverer because they're christians like yesterday i literally was watching a youtube page dedicated to christian witches mm. i sat there and i watched it and and the number one underlying theme of this particular person was they grew up in church yep. they were around yep. judgmental christians the christianity wasn't working for them they don't understand why for them god blessed everybody except them uh how Christ, uh, spirituality couldn't connect the dots they ended up going to college and then they started experimenting with witchcraft and then now they're saying that witchcraft makes more sense to them than actually the bible and it's literally desperation that leads to fear and fear leads to the, everything else that everyone else was talking about I think everybody's so on key here. And I think one of the issues is it goes back to not giving people or not giving the Holy Spirit a platform to encounter people yeah. in church. And so people so badly want to encounter God. And that's why you always hear these witches say, I was raised in church. I grew up in church, but I yeah. never had an experience. Yeah. And then here's what happens. They go to the devil and the devil's like, oh, I'll give you an experience. And the problem is, we have not allowed the Holy Spirit into the church, and so people are not encountering him, and so they go by default because they're longing for an encounter. Now, let me also say this to many of you that genuinely want an encounter, and you're saying, God, why have you not encountered me spiritually? I'm going to help you out here. The moment you start wanting God more than that encounter is the moment God gives you the encounter. When you right. live your life wanting so okay. bad to fall over, to whatever it is, uh, an encounter, right? A vision, an angel. We all want it. Every one of us in the chat, there's 7,600, by the way, incredible. All of us four guys here, we all want encounter. Like I live to encounter God. I want it. I would love it any moment, anytime. Give it to me, Lord. But what happens is, when that becomes your God, the experience right. with God, God knows if I give them this encounter, they're going to walk by feeling, not by faith. Because here's the problem, because this happened to me, guys, in my early days. I would. Yep. Th this is embarrassing, and I'm going to expose myself here, but in my early days, I got radically saved. I would always do this thing, and I know a lot of people have done this in the chat. Don't act like I'm the only one. I did not invent this, <laughs> but I used to, like, because I was so shocked by how God, real God was, because I'd gone from being an atheist to, like, getting radically saved, for like a month, I would go, all right, God, if you're real, give me chills. And I would get chills all down my body. And I did that for like a month. And then at the end of like a month, God was like, when are you going to stop doing that? Like, when are you going to stop doubting me? Because really all that is is doubt. All that is is unbelief. All that is is me testing God. And right. God in his mercy and grace, he gave me the chill bumps. You know, he did whatever. But it's so true about the church when we say like, God, if you're real, show up. But then God says, at what point is it I walk by faith, not by sight? So I'm yeah. not walking by my emotions or feeling. I'm walking by faith. And then here's what happened. When I started no longer needing an experience, if I never, guys, if I never had another experience with God for the rest of my life, I would still serve him. If I never yeah, encountered him, on. his presence, his power, I'm so, I'm so right. deep into it. There's no going back that it doesn't even so matter good. anymore if I fall out or if I encounter God or I see an angel. None of that matters. That's all cherry on top. What matters is I have God and by faith, I believe he's in me. I believe he's with me. So I don't even need the experience. But the problem becomes when we want so bad the experience and we're not getting it in the church because we're not giving the Holy Spirit platform, then we, like you guys just said, we do what Saul did. We got to go to a medium. We got to go to a witch. And on um, 1 Samuel 28, 6, I wanted to read this real quick. It said, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by prophets. Then Saul said to his yeah. servant, seek me a woman that has a familiar spirit that I may uh -huh. go and inquire of the Lord. So Saul wow. is like, Lord, I wow. want you to speak to me like many in the chat. Lord, I need your presence. Lord, I need your power. Lord, give me direction because we know Saul was in a rebellion, disobedience to God. Like many of us in the chat, God says, I'm not going to speak to you because you're asking for the wrong reasons. You've not repented a whole bunch of reasons. And so Saul says, let me go to the witchcraft to try to get an answer from God. And this is what we're seeing happen in the yeah. church. What you just said, 
Pagani is that people are not hearing God. They're not experiencing God. And so they're like, ah, uh, maybe crystals. Like I know someone who's a pastor's wife. Um, again, uh, I don't have to be careful here because, but anyways, she, she opened up a crystal selling business for Christians and she's a pastor's wife because I know her personally. I've known her for a long time. She got saved at the same time as me. The reason why is because I'll tell you right now, she didn't have that encounter she was looking for. God, God. in her mind disappointed her. So now she has wow. to go to crystals and earth and now she's fitted into Christianity and she has a, a business where she sells crystals and Lots of Christians buy them and believe them and whatever. And meanwhile, her husband's a pastor. The problem is we genuinely don't believe that God wants to speak to us, wants to encounter us. We look to encounter, God disappoints us. But friend, I want to tell you, if you're looking to encounter, you're looking for the wrong thing. We don't look on, to encounter, we look to Christ. He's the yeah, author and wow. finisher of our faith. And Jesus right. said, an adulterous generation, I'm going to stop right here because I'm going too long here. Mm -hmm. He said, an adulterous Good. generation this seeks a sign. Time. Come on. And so mm -hmm. as pastors, there's tension. We need to open the door because Jesus said in Matthew 23, you shut the kingdom of heaven against man and you yourself don't get in. So we need to open up the kingdom of heaven's door and let people in, let people encounter God in our church. But at the same time, we don't want to become the encounter, the deliverance, the chill bumps, our God. We don't want to, because for me, chill bumps became my God. It was like, if right. I don't get the chill yeah. bumps for that first month, God's not real. Like now chill bumps are my God. And thank God, obviously that lasted a month. I was immature. And many of you, your baby Christians, those things are okay. God sees us through right. our ignorance. And those are yeah. totally okay if you're going yeah. through that season. But I want to challenge you when you start maturing in God, and we're teaching you guys lessons we learned in the beginning. When you hey. mature in God, you go to God and then the encounter comes and the presence of God comes. You know, what's interesting you know, it saddens my heart to hear that, you know, a first lady or the pastor's wife of a church, which in essence, they're both pastors. So yep. a pastor mm -hmm. of a congregation that has turned to crystals and I'm, you know, and I'm not in judgment, you know, cause I, I, right. I'm not the person, but, um, it, but this broadcast is designed to expose Come on. at least some things. So that way the Christian can know, cause maybe in the beginning you don't know. And then once you get caught up and you get entangled yep. in it, and then it's kind of hard to break away from it. But let me, let me just kind of say some things that we need to ve vehemently say here, cause we're talking about different shades of yeah. witchcraft. Now a yeah. shade is a variation of a primary color, which mm. means there's a primary color and then there are different shades. It's part of the same color. It's just a different variation, which means the primary color is blue, but then you have navy blue, you got mosaic blue, you got sky blue. Those are variations or different to. shades. So there's one network of witchcraft mm. or the craft of a witch, all right? But then there's these variations. Now here's what's beginning to become popular within the Christian church. And I, I'm, a, I'm a little amped up here because ahead, I think I think we need to really like confront this stuff is number one, Christians should not be burning sage Come to on, try man. to remove demons from their house. That is the devil. Number two, astral projection. That is not the Holy Spirit. You are not prophetic. That is not the gift of prophecy. You are not a prophet. If you're astral projection, that is the devil. Number two, three is Daily tarot reading cards. If Come you're on, into the tarot on. reading and then also on. reading your Bible, that is witchcraft. Angel destiny cards, the devil, 100%, not even holding back on that one. Isaiah has <laughs> talked about that one before. The Christian that is also into chanting and blanking out their mind in meditation. The Christian on. does not blank out their mind. We Come meditate on. on scripture. We meditate on scripture. We don't blank out our mind talking about oh, God speak to me. If a Christian, let me tell you something, go ahead and blank out your mind, a demon will talk to you. That is not how we listen to God in prayer. We meditate on scripture and then we tell the Holy Spirit, not on the outside, but he's living on the inside to talk to us. So Christian who chants to try to get to a place of solace and peace or blanking out their mind, that is another form of witchcraft. Right. Burning incense putting a little cup of incense somewhere in your house, not for the sake of aroma, but for the sake of some sort of spiritual sacred experience, that is another form of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Calling on angels and archangels to come talk to you come or on. to come be involved in your Stay prayer here, life or on. to teach you the Bible and Get to it. walk with you, that is witchcraft. Spells, Isaiah talked about that. That one is actually pointed out in scripture, Galatians chapter three. Christian yoga is Say witchcraft. It. I'm glad you said Period. that. Period is witchcraft. Crystals, witchcraft. Uh, detox pearls, where we put these little trinkets to so, some sort of 
detoxing ourselves. New age. And the last thing I want to say is just be careful of sometimes secret society theology of some sort of these yes. new things that have erected themselves. So you're going to get mad at me. But Black Lives Matter theology is of the devil because they themselves have said that they have called on the ancient spirits to help them perpetuate the agenda. Critical race theory, another form of witchcraft. These are new theologies that have erected themselves that the Christian church have embraced raise as some sort of movement to help empowerment to help empower the people i'm not talking about the empowerment stuff the empowerment stuff amen but i'm talking about the ideologies and where their philosophies are drawing from yeah. they're wow. actually getting wow. this information from the dark side from the supernatural so these are certain things and maybe you didn't know this we're not just going to leave it at just the works of the flesh we're going to tell you exactly Good. what it is so that way when you get to the place of desperation you don't turn to you don't turn to crystals you don't turn to angels yeah, you don't on, turn bro. to tarot cards you don't ask to project trying to connect with God you don't burn sage to try to remove come a demon on. you want to remove a demon in your house number one repent get your life come right on, with God on, and use on. the name of Jesus and come then on. and third go around your house and throw out everything that belongs to the devil and I promise you the devil will leave your house Come so on. good. You know, there's one thing I've been seeing pop mm. up, and I'm going to pass it to you, Mike, is also necromancy. Mm. This is something, guys, yes. now there's uh -huh. some of you in the chat that are like, I would never do this. There's believers I've talked to recently, messages, comments of like, I don't get, Isaiah, why is it wrong that my grandma is coming to me at night who's died four years ago, and she talks to me, and then here's another one. People say, well, my grandma who's in heaven comes down from heaven and talks to me or my grandpa or I could smell my aunt's apple pie and she comes down out of heaven and she talks to me and then goes back and tells me what she sees in heaven, what heaven's like. Listen, if you're getting revelation from a dead relative at night about what heaven is like, that's necromancy that is engaging and speaking to the dead and it's demonic. Right. It's not of God. It's prohibited in scripture. It's a violation of scripture. Do not communicate wow, with the dead. If your relative to visit you visits you at night tell them to go back where they came from say go back wherever it is you came from i'm going to bed it's way too late for you to be trying to cook me up some apple pie at three in the morning um auntie boo boo i, I don't want to talk to you i'll see you when, if you're in heaven praise the lord i'll see you when we get there but don't be entertaining it because there's a lot of you in the chat that that we deal with in deliverance and again some pastors are watching, they're like, I don't ever deal with this. It's because you don't do deliverance, okay? If you start casting demons out, you start finding out certain movies open doors, certain music open doors. I know there's a lot of pastors like, you think de movies could open the door to demons? You're crazy. It's because you don't deal with demons, we do. So your people come to us and Whoa. say, I watched this movie, now I have a demon. Or I listen to this music, now I have a demon. So yeah, of course it's Whoa. crazy to you because you don't do any spiritual warfare. But I deal with these people, guys. I know you have too, where they talk to familiar spirits, they get familiar mm -hmm. spirits, and these spirits spirits are familiar which is why they're called familiar spirits with your relative so you say well how would they know about what my aunt used to love to wear how would it's because the demons are familiar with her remember demons have been around since the beginning of since the beginning of creation when god created them actually before creation and so they know these things that we would not know they have information we don't have and they know like people say I went to a medium and the medium told me this accident that happened at a party I was at five years ago. How did the media, how did the medium know? Well, how about because the demon was there at the party with you? That's how they know. So if you're wondering how demons know all this stuff about you, they were there with you while you were up there shaking your thing on the bar Come stool. On. So don't Come be on. shocked when mediums know things about you. Don't be shocked when witches know things about you. They know because the spirits were there with you. So again, do not engage. Do not engage with Aunt Boo Boo or Uncle Terry or whatever your grandma comes and says oh mijo i love you and god loves you listen god will tell you he loves you you don't need grandma telling you she loves you do not engage why why is it a big deal because it opens you up to that familiar spirit when you engage and by the way we just hit 8200 this is so crazy what? guys Jesus. i'm like our record was 6000 before this and we're at 8200 right now but guys i want to tell you be careful when you start trying no, no i don't want to even say be careful don't engage at all with Come any on. spirit write this down other than the holy spirit if the Come spirit's on. first name i'm getting basic is not holy mm. cast that spirit out in jesus Come name on. if it's an angel spirit pagani i'm so glad you said this because recently i've been having a lot of people uh, archangel michael came to me and michael gave me a scroll listen listen linda michael oh, did not come to you michael is so busy 
He's not coming to you, giving you a scroll. So, all those YouTubers you watch about how they got a new president prophecy from Michael the Archangel and that the presidency is going to be overturned, these are demon spirits. These are not Archangel Michael. These are not Gabriel. These are lying spirits. And God right. allows lying spirits to deceive his people when they're already in deception. Go read your Bible. So I really believe we need to stop with this Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel. And I had this angel came to me. He had 19 wings, all that. If you saw an angel, praise the Lord. Angels are real. We just got done talking about them for the last two and a half months in our broadcast on Book of Revelation. But when you start getting more revelation from angels than the Holy Ghost, and you start worshiping them, talking about them, every day an angel whispers you, tickles you with a feather, you need to be careful because this is this is not, now let me say this and I'm going to end with this. This is My not, God. this is not like backroom theology. This is not rare theology. Guys, we all know this. This is mainstream charismatic churches. This is mainstream yeah, yeah. Pentecostal churches that are yeah. an angel, an angel, an angel, an yeah. angel, an angel and they're using angels t talking to them to change what scripture says so let me just say one last thing conspiracy theories guys this is demonic all of these let me tell you why you're so involved in conspiracies number one is because you don't pray number two it's because you're trying to make sense of darkness you're trying to make sense of the mm -hmm. devil and so you have mm -hmm. to find a reason why this is happening and there's this conspiracy happening in the government there's this conspiracy happening there's this new conspiracy it's like every week there's a new conspiracy because you're trying to make sense how about this it's the devil you don't need a conspiracy theory. The devil's real. He really wants people to have abortions. He really wants to destroy marriages. He really wants to reign in the governments. And the devil's alive and well, and we need to fight him instead of making another new conspiracy. I'm like, dude, when all this election stuff was happening, I almost threw up with all the conspiracies were going on. We need to stop because conspiracies in their, in their true nature are of the devil. They are demonic. They're started by... I know I'm gonna lose a bunch of people here and subscribers, but they're started by demonic spirits. So these are just some more things I wanted to add. I don't know if Mike or Vlad, you have any other ones yeah, we missed. Um, well, you're, you're, you're speaking into so much of it because even with the conspiracy theories, what is it? It's fear that turns yes. into control. Yes. Right? You fear what's mm. happening. You fear how things are unfolding and then you wanna assert control. So by understanding how it's all the dots are connecting, you have a sense of control. Mm. But I wanna just say this because I feel like this is such a prophetic broadcast tonight. Somebody needs to hear this. Your loved one did not send you a sign. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Your loved one did not send you a sign. I feel like the people Holy are going Spirit crazy right to now. highlight grief. Grief oh. has driven more people to witchcraft wow. than any other emotion. Grief. Jeez. Your loved one did not send you a sign. Wow. Don't communicate, confront. It don't mm, communicate yeah. with oh, that really? the spirit of that little girl in your kitchen. I got news for you. It's not the spirit of a little girl. It's a demonic entity, and it's probably in you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't yeah. tell you how many times. Yeah. You know, back in the day, I can't do this now. I used to literally make home visits. People would say, I have poltergeist type things. Things yeah. are slamming, falling off walls. 100% wow. of the time, they needed deliverance, not their house. Wow. Okay. Wow. And so I just, I feel like I had to take a step back and say, you, you guys are not getting a sign from your loved one. You are getting a distraction from the one who hates your soul. Wow. I mean, that, that's what it is. The enemy is distracting you and he wants you caught up in bad theology. And I, I just feel like I should read the scripture. It is old Testament. Mm. So forgive me, apostle Isaiah, I'm going to go there. <laughs> no, good, um, dude. Go there. I love it. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse eight through mm. 12. There's a revelation here though. And there is a new covenant context. Deuteronomy 18, nine through 12 says, when you enter the land that the Lord, your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate mm. the detestable ways of the nations there. So there's something about your phone that makes you an imitator. Many of you wouldn't have known what Sage was unless you saw it here and, and you imitated it. There's mm. something about imitation. You're seeing and you're imitating. You're seeing oh and you're God. imitating. And so it's like, it is possible to be in the world, but not of the world. It's, mm. it's possible to be a friend of sinners like Jesus, but somebody yeah. needs to hear you imitated. Somebody manifested money. And so you became a guru to manifest money. You're imitating. And it says, do wow. not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. And this is what it says. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire who Jeez, practices Lord. divination Lord. or sorcery, Jesus. interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts mm -hmm. spells, or who is a medium or spiritist who consults the dead. Anyone <laughs> who does these things is detestable to the Lord. 
And so I just felt like I needed to get that out there because for so many of you, you would have never stepped in this direction had you not seen it and imitated it. And for many more of you, it was grief that opened up that door and a heart full of grief is like, I'm going to go and move in that direction. And I feel like there's a major league freedom where people are like, I did it for the wrong reasons. I've even been reading the comments, people saying I'm coughing, I'm vomiting. People are already Come starting on. to Come go on. through deliverance. You know, <laughs> people are throwing things away. So tonight is like a monumental and night. And we just hit 8,500, by the way, which Come is on. absolutely Ow. insane. Mm. Insane. And I wanted, to, so I wanted to touch on one broadcast. thing as you're saying that too, is one thing I hear, I've heard this for years. I was like, what is this? Where people say, oh yeah, I have a prophetic gift. And it's like, well, how do you know? And they say, oh, before I was saved, I used to get information about people. I would know things about people and it must've been a prophetic gift. I've heard that a thousand times. That's a familiar spirit. That's not a yeah. prophetic gift. It's a familiar spirit giving you information about somebody. So be careful that you're not thinking a familiar spirit is the Holy Spirit. If you're getting, now again, I believe in word of knowledge. We all believe it. We all te have taught sermons on it. We all do the words and we all flow in words of knowledge. I've heard all three of I believe you guys doing words of knowledge. We all believe it's all that, right? But getting random information that has nothing to do with you that doesn't grow the kingdom of god that doesn't point to jesus about people is not word of knowledge it's familiar spirits so Come i know on. people that are like i have the word of knowledge and um they get saved and they're like i've had this gift for years and i get information listen if you're not full of the holy spirit you do not have the gifts of the holy spirit so do not think like when i was a kid i used to get information i must just be prophetic no it was a familiar spirit so we have to also be careful that we're not letting demons feed this information thinking it's actually the Holy Spirit now how do I know maybe now some of you are scared like maybe it's a demon speaking not the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus that's his job mm, the Holy yeah. Spirit convicts that's his job the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. judges righteously and brings mm -hmm. godly condemnation against sin so if the if the voice you're hearing or the words you're hearing or the information you're getting is about something that bad that happened to someone when they were a kid or they're you're using it to try to get an edge on your boss because now you have information because people do use this to blackmail they do think it's a gift from god and now i'm going to use it as leverage these are all things that happen all the time whether you believe it or not those are familiar spirits they're not the holy spirit now when you you could say it's a holy spirit and think it's a holy spirit but if it doesn't bring glory mm -hmm. to jesus it's not a gift of the spirit or the holy spirit if it's not bringing people to yeah, be healed good. if it's not bringing people to be delivered if it's not mm -hmm. a word of knowledge to bring edification vacation in that realm now will the holy spirit give you a word of knowledge in deliverance about something someone went through absolutely will the holy spirit give you a word of knowledge to bring healing over a situation absolutely but the holy spirit doesn't go around whispering secrets about people to bring destruction and to bring dismay and so that you can get an edge on people you can dominate right. people witchcraft mm -hmm. come on guys you can Stay dominate in. you oh i know this happened to you when you were a kid and then they start crying and they start shaking and they're in fear and you now have a dominate a domination over them you now have control over them because you wow. know something about them nobody knows there's times where the holy spirit will tell me something a word of knowledge about someone and say keep your mouth shut pray for them do not say a word about right. it it's not for you to say it's not for them to know you know and i'm just going to pray so i really think we have to be careful that we're not allowing now paul did warn okay. us that another spirit was coming into the church that wasn't the holy spirit and paul said you've mm. received the spirit as if it was the holy spirit he said you've received mm. a different spirit now they weren't let me just make this clear they weren't opening the door of the church saying, demons come in. What they were doing was they were allowing demonic spirits in thinking it was the Holy Spirit. Then even mm -hmm. Paul said that you've allowed a different Jesus in and they allowed a different right. Jesus in thinking it was Jesus. So Paul is, had to do what we're doing tonight, bring correction to say yeah. that's a different spirit a different gospel and a different Jesus that's being preached. And then they can recognize, oh, this is not God. So this is what we're trying to help you with. We don't want you to doubt the voice of God. We don't want you cool. to leave this broadcast now. Like I don't ha want to have an encounter with God anymore because it's all demonic. No, but we do want to draw the line in the sand because there's many people in the charismatic and Pentecostal churches that are following other spirits, thinking it's the Holy Spirit when it's grieving the Holy Spirit, not inviting the Holy Spirit. All right, someone else go for it. I know I'm oh, talking good. way too much yeah. here. I'll, I'll mention about the... I say along the line, I, the girl at the Philippi, Acts chapter 16, verse 16. Mm, she, yes. had, she had the spirit of divination. She had a python spirit. And surprisingly, everything she said was 100% yep. true. In fact, she was so accurate with her predictions that she was 
an employee. She was on the staff of some pretty popular businesses of the day. And the reason that they came against Apostle Paul is because the the projections of their profits or their profits, you know, were on decline. And so we have to always consider the source, not just the accuracy of the prophecy, not just mm. the, the accuracy of the prediction so good. or um, or how good people sound, but we have to consider the source. But one thing I want to highlight that as uh, different things were being mentioned, and I've dealt with that with few people who went to a witch doctor or some people who have a question like, well, I went to this person and they healed me. Mm. Or they removed actually a demon that I struggled with or they removed a sickness that I had. And so this is what we have to understand is that witch doctors don't cast out demons, they transfer them. Mm. Witch doctors, yeah. they don't heal, they move demons from one organ to another one. Come on. Witch oh. doctors, they send stronger demons to squash the weaker demons and then you think the problem is resolved. But in reality, you got a stronger demon that dominated the weaker one. You got a bigger sickness now that pretty much squashed the weaker sickness. And then those sicknesses uh, no. begin to reappear. I've seen this when it happens with people. It seems like, oh, I had this back problem. I went and, you know, they, they did some little charms on me and they anointed me with stuff. They did some chants on me or they gave me this particular uh, potion, this particular thing to take home. I did the ritual and I am gone. This problem is gone. And then you will see shortly after that this person goes from having a back problem to having cancer yes wow and so yes. while they remove yes. one yes. they replaced it with another satan uh, demons and the work of of the way they're they, the way they're successful is because they're using the power of the enemy the devil has no healing to give the enemy has no freedom to give you if he gives something with his right hand it's because with his left hand he's taking what your life depends wow. on and so if you have went to the witch doctor if you have called the psychic line if you have went to somebody to help you connect with the spiritual realm and today you are seeing a huge attack upon your life Come you on. really genuinely need to repent you genuinely need to throw away anything that connects you to that yes. what you did was not just the work of the flesh you betrayed god you cheated on God. This stuff is serious. This is not like, you know, Israel complaining and they finally drove God crazy after 10th time. No, this stuff was punishable by death because this thing brings death. You're crossing. It's kind of like if a husband forgets to take the garbage out, you know, like, yeah, uh, it might ruin, you know, the, the moment or ruin the evening. It's different if you cheated on your wife. Okay. Wow. It's, the covenant is broken. When you go to the dark side, God sees that as cheating on him. God sees that as you're breaking wow, the covenant. Wow. This stuff is so serious. This is not like so many people treat it like, oh, it was like, you know, I had a weak moment. No, you had a weak moment is if you had an outburst of anger, you had a moody day, or you said something stupid. That's a weak moment. But when you're going to the other side, that's not a weak moment. That is pure wickedness. That right. is pure transgression. That stuff, God takes his protection off of your life. It doesn't matter how many membership meetings you've been through, which denomination you went through, and what your title is at church. You transgressed. You God's wrath rests upon you, and you need mm. to repent. And I'm not talking about God, I'm sorry, like Saul did. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, but still honor me in front of the elders. Elders, you got to, like, break down and really cry out to God for mercy so God can reverse whatever that's been initiated in your life and bring total deliverance because you can go to each one of our ministries and receive prayer but please understand you can get prayer from us freedom comes from him wow. and if you transgressed against him you got to get right with him and you got to do it with a contrite and a broken heart so and this good. is why this is why for those of you that let's say you're listening and you say it that's me I, I've 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 broken my covenant. Okay. We're, 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 a simple I'm sorry. It really isn't enough because it's the, mm. a wife can forgive a spouse can forgive another spouse. Oh, Watch mm. this for committing adultery, but trust takes time to rebuild, and mm. this is why repentance is the first phase. But I would encourage you. We get this all the time in our ministry. So many people come to our ministry in the Bronx for deliverance and witchcraft. And, and usually when it comes to like witchcraft, I, I take, I, I literally give them some instruction. Number one, you got to repent. Number two is yeah. get into a season of fasting. Come on. A season of fasting to, so that way you can really press in and, and t 
to fight so that the Holy Spirit can reveal what is the root cause mm. of your double mindedness because at the heart of it is double mindedness and double mindedness mm. is a humongous sin in the Old Testament. This is why Joshua said, why are you swayed between two opinions? This there is why go. Elijah came and said, um, you guys are in between two opinions. If God is God, let him be God. This is a humongous sin. So number one is obviously you have to repent. Number two is get into a season of fasting where you spend some time before the Lord and allowing the Lord to reveal deeper wickedness that requires a deeper level of deliverance. Number three is this. You're going to have to really throw out everything in your house. Throw out everything in your house that you know is connected to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to get rid of it. Number four is this, and this one is a big one. This is a big one. The Bible says, confess your faults to one another. Come on. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. That means that there's, there's a measure of deliverance that can be finalized so when you good. actually go to a Christian brother and say, you know what? Yeah. Sometimes we tell our brothers when we're angry, when we had an argument, we might even tell someone, you know what? Um, I was looking at pornography, but you know how hard it is to go to a Christian brother or your pastor to yeah. say, man, I've been messing with witchcraft, pastor. I'm with yes. This is why God is saying the finalization of some of your freedom wow. is at the end result of confession to another brother. When you say, you know what? I've been messing with witchcraft and therefore finally that power gets broken and then you'll be able on the path you'll be able to set right on the path of restoration mm. but it's the same thing as a spouse committing adultery saying i'm sorry that's a good place to start but you know emotionally and relationally it is not enough when we go from serving the living god to actually going to a witch to get an answer listening to a demon to get an answer to a prayer. It's going to require fruits worthy of repentance, which means repentance is a measure. It's a measurement. It has to be measured up to the place of wor worthy, worthy repentance. It's not just worldly sorrow. I'm sorry. God forgives me my grace. No, you have to measure it with fruits worthy of repentance. And then it enters or allows you to enter into a place of godly sorrow. Because godly sorrow will produce that when things get rough, the next time you won't go back to witchcraft again because that thing has been eradicated out of you. So good. Oh. And I want to also introduce, the, well, we don't introduce it because we've been talking about this whole time of witchcraft. Again, guys, is not just I went and did a candle or a sage. It's disobedience to the word of God. It's living yeah. life in human effort instead of the power of God. And the essence of witchcraft, what Samuel told Saul, is rebellion. When you rebel yeah. against what God has told you to do specifically. Now, when I say specifically, this is what I mean by it. God told Saul, kill everything. He spared King Agag. He didn't do what God said specifically what God said. Not like, oh, it's in the Bible. I need to do it. Specifically what God said to do. That was the producing factor of witchcraft in Saul's life. Samuel came, basically said, Saul, rebellion is of witchcraft, is of the sin of witchcraft. So when God tells me to do something, not, not, not uh, Pagani, not Vlad, not Mike, when God says Isaiah, get rid of this or don't do this or do this and i disobey god i rebel against what god has spoken to me to do that is when witchcraft begins to take root in my life rebellion fear anger bitterness depression anxiety those are the fruit witchcraft is the root so yeah you have pastors that are again and i want to be very sensitive here that are dealing with anxiety dealing with depression dealing with fear dealing with all of these things that they're going through they don't realize those spirits are fruit of the root and the root is witchcraft the root is somewhere on for the most part not always but somewhere down the line usually there was rebellion towards what god told us to do when i first got saved god told me get rid of your music get rid of your movies get rid of your video games get rid of break up with the girl you're with for four years right now i didn't get on live stream and say everybody right now god is saying everybody break up with their girlfriend they've been with but for me God specifically said, do this for me specifically. If I did didn't obey God, witchcraft would start taking root in my life according to scripture. Yeah. So this is where we need to realize, like you're in the chat saying, well, I don't burn sage. Well, I don't do Ouija boards. Well, I don't do this. But do you rebel against God? Are you obeying Come when on. God says, go pray for that person? Are you obeying when mm -hmm. God says, get rid of that relationship? Are you obeying when God says, don't watch that movie? Are you obeying when God says, don't get that thing? For, for you, Pagani, it might not be sin, but for me, 
It is sin. Like people always ask me, well, why don't you have tattoos? Do you think they're wrong? I don't think they're wrong for you. I think they're wrong for me because God has specifically told me, do not do this. So I'm not going to make a video saying anyone that has a tattoo is in sin because it's, it's a personal conviction. It's personally for me. And if I go against what God has told me, I would be in rebellion, which is of witchcraft. So I want you guys to see that there. Um, I want to talk about one more shade here, entertainment. This is a major way. Enter Entertainment, a major way that witchcraft enters people, music, movies, culture, things you watch. And for many of you, you spend six to eight hours a day. I just read an article um, by the Wall Street Journal. And I think, guys, we talked about this a few months ago, but the Wall Street Journal posted an article about two weeks ago is when I read it saying that young girls are going into doctor's offices with ticks. And here's where they're connecting it. Yeah. It's because of TikTok. They did a study because wow. they're finding all these young girls that are going in with ticks, like the physical, they're physically having uh-huh. ticks. And the doctors did a study and said every girl, and these are girls from around the world, this is the Washing, um, the Washing, the Wall Street Journal that did this article. They said that all these girls had in common was extended amounts of time on TikTok. So now you My have a God. social media Social wow. media, which is named TikTok, think about this, is actually wow. causing physical ticks in these young wow. girls, and some of them were young men, mostly young girls in the study. And this is entertainment bringing on not only spirits, but bringing wow. on mind control. So the reason My why God. we think a certain way, the reason why we think things are appropriate, the reason why we think this is that is because of culture, because of entertainment. So now we have, instead of the word of God driving us, TikTok drives us. Instead of the word of God leading the church, it's now the news, Fox News or CNN or ABC Jeez. are now driving us. So this entertainment, movies, culture, programming. Guys, I don't know if you know back in the day when people used to watch TV um, or like cable television, they called it programming. Programming. We interrupt this yep. broadcast, this program, because it actually literally programs the brain. It's programming the mind God. of your children, programming. And some of you, your children's iPad have discipled them. You haven't discipled them. So you say, why is wow. my kid saying these bad Shoot. words? Well, because the iPad programmed them to say those words. Why does my kid know about the song? Because TikTok programmed them to know about that song. And we need to reprogram them with the word of God. We need to re re-disciple them with our time and our engine and effort. But I want to touch on that because I think this is um, under talked about, this entertainment, the movies, the yeah. music, and that they mm-hmm. literally do change the way we think and they literally do influence us more than we realize. Yeah, it's physically changing the structure of your brain. You know, you don't have a phone, you have a portal. Wow. You don't have an iPad, you have a portal and wow. you're opening it up. You know, I was looking at the statistic And students spend 900 hours a year in school, but 2,363 hours watching stuff on their phone. So it's like literally three times more education is happening through this than it is happening in the classroom. And so we've really got to understand. Now, here's the thing. People are going to say they're legalistic. That's always what it is. They're legalistic. They're legal. I and and I really want to expose that because it's like the fruit doesn't lie. When mm-hmm. I'm taking someone through deliverance who said that I had an iPad in my room, I was in fifth grade, I was exposed to pornography, yep, yep. it led to an addiction that lasts decades. And you hear that story and over and over again, you're like, wow, this really isn't a phone. It's a portal. It's a portal to literally the demonic realm. And it's just like that scripture I read earlier where it was like, hey, Israel, you're coming into this land. You are to possess that territory, but there are people there doing things that you should not imitate. Mm. And that's, to me, to me, it's like many of you watching, you don't know who you are without being exposed to all the stuff you were exposed wow. to. My you don't God. know who you would have been if it wasn't for their influence. Wow. You don't wow. know who you really are because you've always had so much influence. And so there's got to be, um, I, I think for us, There has to be a level of wisdom in this season. There has to be a level of understanding how we use things. And this, I think for many of you listening, there's a confirmation right now that you're receiving, like, I need to wake up because my kids don't just have phones. They have portals into their life. And this, and here's the thing, as somebody who used to have a, I used to have over 150 students per semester for six years straight, because I was a teacher, side note. And I remember when I would discipline kids, Students would come up to me crying at the end of the school year saying, I know you love me more than my own dad because you disciplined me and my dad never did. 
And so it's like, you think that by restricting something in your kid's life, they're gonna hate you, but they Mm. understand it as a form of love. And we're really living in this season right now where anything goes, we babysit our kids with devices, we allow the world to to dominate. You got the prince and the power, the ruler of the air. It's like, Mm. what's in the air? Internet, television, radio, it's all in the air. He's been manipulating, dominating, and controlling you. And some of you don't know who you are without these devices. Wow. You know, and I tell people this all the time because they're like, oh, you must love social media because you're all over social media media. I'm like, no, no, no. Like I I consume three people's content and they're in this me broadcast too, bro. right now. Me too. I hate going on like, social media. I, I use social media. Social media doesn't use me. Come on. And bro. I think for some of you, you you like you have issues because you have subscriptions to issues and you need to wow, un, you need to block bro. people. <laughs> you you know you need to Somebody block need to people. Detox. You need to un, you need to unsubscribe because it's influencing you and God wants you to be free. It's part of this whole shades of witchcraft. So good. You know, Even, I, have, go ahead. I have to say, you know, this broadcast has to be by far the most apostolic and prophetic we Come have on. ever been in this God is Literally, you can feel the prophetic flow just flowing. It's not, mm-hmm. I genuinely believe that all four of us are contributing in a prophetic manner that I know that the hearers, even they are feeling the conviction. There's something unique about this particular broadcast. And I think it's because we've all been fasting and Come praying on. and confessing to one another. I think it's just something is really prophetic and anointed in the atmosphere. And we want those of you that are watching, whether you're watching this live or on a replay, tap into this thing. Come on. Tap into this thing. Like this is so multi-dimensional, multifaceted from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we're tapping into the different shades of witchcraft. Yeah. And God is saying he has allowed you to watch this broadcast so that way you could be able to get your life right. Get your family back and kick the devil out of your life and out of your house and out of your church pastors. Mm -hmm. So good. And I want to, I want to just expose one more lie when it comes to entertainment. Those of you that follow like ungodly or non-Christian vloggers or influencers, right? Which is like the big buzzword because everyone's on social media all day. Now it's like the celebrities are not even like A-list movie celebrities, they're influencers. So now social media people have more influence than for some of you older people for back in the day, it was like um, whoever it was, the celebrities that were acting in movies. Movie actors are not even influential compared to influencers online now. I want to challenge some of you. Maybe you're sitting here going, I don't listen to worldly music. I'm holy. I'm this. But you follow all of these ungodly, non-Christian influencers. There's a reason why they're called influencers, okay? And technically, all four of us are also social media influencers because they influence you. And the way I know this is because now that you've been watching them, you start talking different. You start acting different. Mm -hmm. You start doing different hobbies, your desires. We're not seeing you in the prayer meeting anymore. We're not seeing you hanging out with Christian girls like you used to or Christian girls guys you used to after church you'd hang around and you go find a christian brother christian sisters they get together well now that you've been following this vlogger or this person or this um oh other I- influencer wow. you're no longer Jesus. influence you're you, you run right out of the church when it gets over you're no longer at the prayer meeting you're no longer sharing the broadcast of pastor oh. vlad or pastor mike and you've drifted from god because they've influenced you to take another path and then this is what you say you defend them by saying this well they're positive they have good vibes. They don't cuss. Mm. This is what they say. They don't cuss. They're in. They're positive. The movies, it's not that bad. If it's not that bad, why did you have to fast forward at four different scenes? If you have to keep fast forwarding scenes, you shouldn't be watching it, period. But the problem mm. is we've allowed other influences in our life and they've Come caused on. us to drift away from God. And Come these on. are the subtle things witchcraft does is they subtly draw you away and they masquerade as angels of light. They don't seem Come that on. bad. And my yeah. thing wow. to you is, Remove things that are not of God. Remove things that are drifting, that are causing you to fall away from God and that are putting your fire out and putting the the, the passion that you have out and start following godly things. Start following godly movies, godly music, godly preachings. There's a lot of Christian influencers online. There's a lot of Christians making good content. So don't tell me, well, there's just no Christians well, doing it. There's a, a, any content you consume, there's a Christian version that's just as good. Don't let the devil on. lie to you and say, well, that's going to be B-list or C-list if it's 
prophets, Christian, you got to decide that you're not in, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. I felt that was prophetic that some of you yeah. are following ungodly, uh, ungodly mm, uh, so movies, good. music, and you're, you're wondering why your fires died. You'll never keep the fire if you're letting junk food in all the time, if you're letting your waters be polluted. That's good. I want to uh, add to that. You know, I had a, um, it was through watching um, about 16 years ago when a, I felt a demon enter me, a demon of lust wow. uh, through pornography. So I've experienced that. Um, and then I had to go and experience, you know, deliverance. I battled with it. I, I didn't think it was a demon. I, I felt something, um, you know, and I thought it was just, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, other um, physical uh, thing until um, it started to be attached to me as a teenager. And when I fought with, with it, you know, physically, um, doing all the things that you would do, discipline, you know, and um, controlling your flesh and all of these things, it wouldn't work. And until I've experienced deliverance and I've noticed the change after that, you know, like the, I was liberated from that. So you can so you good. can get a demon through that. But we must understand that, you know, the reason why it's called pay attention is because your attention is the currency for which wow. you pay for whatever that you're going to get. In fact, they even did a documentary and a they said word. that the people who have made social media, we Christians call social media as a tool. They call it a drug. Mm. They, they don't, it's not a tool for them. It's a drug. And your attention, my attention, is the product that is being sold to the advertisers. And our attention today is under attack. We must understand it. I, I like what you, know, these, um, what you guys have mentioned is that whatever my attention is at today will determine where my appetite is going to be tomorrow. Right. Whatever I consume mm. today will control me tomorrow. If you're addicted to something, it started with an appetite, but the appetite started with attention. If you want to change where your appetites are at, change where you put your attention to. God clearly stated to Joshua, Joshua said to the nation of Israel, he said, consecrate yourself today for tomorrow. God will do wonders in your midst. In other words, if you want to, your attention today, where you're giving your attention, will determine tomorrow's appetite, will determine tomorrow's addiction, will determine, will determine tomorrow's affection. If you don't have appetite for God right now, I mean, take next 30 days and cut off all the stuff that you are watching and replace it with things. Force feed yourself. Mm -hmm. Force feed yourself. Don't wait to feel it. You Say have to it. force the just because physical hunger, you know, comes from not eating. Spiritual hunger comes from eating, yes. feeding yourself, feed yourself with the right stuff. Your flesh will throw a fit. Your flesh will complain at first. But then after a while, your spirit will take over and you will notice a hunger for God. You will notice an appetite. You will notice an addiction. You will notice a healthy obsession with the things of God that will come as a result of your appetite. So the goal is not, I want to cut off the bad stuff. The goal is that I want to replace that with the good stuff. I mean, when it comes to social media, I mean, take inventory of your attention. Are you, um, is this giving you peace or is this giving you anxiety? You know, mm. is this causing you to be burned out or is it keeps, keeps you burning? Um, is it something that is numbing you or is it nurturing you? I mean, is this mm. something that's feeding you? What you're eating, is it feeding you? Is what you're consuming, is it controlling you? Is it like sugar? You keep coming back at it and it's destroying you from within. But My it's definitely God. an open door. Like I remember Isaiah, how you mentioned uh, when you were in our church about, you know, how everyone now bows to the yep. phone. Yep. You know, like before they would bow to their idols and now our idol is the phone. And that is so true. Yeah, every mm. time it beings that, you know, Nebuchadnezzar would b ring a bell and then everyone have to bow down in worship. And every time this beings and the, the text goes off, we bow down in worship. We spend most Ooh. of our life bowing down before our phone. Think about it. What is the position? That's why wow. if you go in church, everyone has like neck pain, back pain. It's because we spend half our life looking down at our phone and you look up and go like, oh, wow, there's a world around me that I totally <laughs> forgot about because I've been watching people dance on TikTok for three hours. And actually God's been showing me, I'm going to make a video this weekend on it, on how TikTok culture is destroying Christianity, literally destroying. It's destroying our attention span. I can't give away too much because wow. you guys won't watch my video. It's destroying our attention span. <laughs> it's destroying our passion for true for true pleasure and true things. It's destroying so many areas of our life we don't realize because it's reducing this sewing and working and effort and time spent with 15 seconds, 
God, you have 15 seconds. And if God, if you don't do something for me in 15 seconds, wow, I'm wow, swiping wow, up to on. the next thing. And God, if you don't move, oh, I'm swiping up to the next you desire. Say that again. Say that again. Yeah, like, we have this. We have this the same way we're on TikTok of if I don't like it and I'm giving it 15 seconds and if it doesn't bring me pleasure or desire, I'm going to swipe it. We do that with God. God, you got 15 seconds. Wow. If you don't show up, if you don't move, wow. I'm going to swipe on. I'm going to go from God to Netflix. I'm going to go from God to Instagram. I'm going to go from God to Hulu. And we, we literally use our phone to babysit our brain. One day I was sitting there on oh my, my phone God. and I was on my phone. I was like, why, why am I this way? I was thinking this in my head. I was like, why am I this way where if like 10 seconds goes by and I'm not doing something, I have to check my YouTube studio. I have to check my algorithm. I have to check my Instagram. And God said, because Isaiah, you need something. This is what God spoke to me. He Jesus. said, you need something to babysit your brain. Your brain Ooh. has been rewired wow. by Instagram, TikTok, social media. Wow. If your brain's not babysat or not doing something for like 10 seconds, you have to find something to babysit it. And so you're on TikTok, Instagram, Hulu, Netflix, your YouTube studio, whatever your vice is, because God's just not wow. enough. Like scripture is just not enough. Your family, your kids are just not enough. And I am convicted by this guys every single day when my Me children too. are sitting there and I'm on my YouTube studio, looking at my algorithm, looking at my numbers, looking at all the stuff I look at. And I'm sitting there and my kids are in front of me. And I'm, I'm, this is what I'm telling my kids. You're not good enough. This is, this is what I'm telling my kids. I'm talking to myself. This phone wow. is more important than you right now. And wait till wow. I'm done with my phone because you need to wait. You're, you're not a priority to me. And if wow. that's what I'm telling my kids, what am I telling wow. God when all day wow. long I'm spending time on my phone and not at his throne? All day mm. long, I'm wow. scrolling my life away, <laughs> literally <laughs> scrolling my life away. And I'm throwing my destiny into the garbage bin of Instagram, the garbage bin of YouTube. Wow. And God is saying, what about me? And then we, and then we have the nerve guys. This is what we do. I'm preaching to myself. I'm getting hot here. I'm gonna put the fan on myself. We go at nighttime and we're like, oh, hi, God. Hi, how are you? At the end of the day, when we're exhausted from watching social right. media all day, and we go, oh, God, how are you? Um, would you do me a huge favor and protect my house and my kids and my and make sure no one breaks in tonight and just prosper my ministry? And then all day long, we ignore God and we worship Ouch. this phone. And I really believe, guys, on Judgment Day, this phone will testify against us. When we say... Because all of us will say this on Judgment Day. I didn't have I didn't have time to pray. I didn't have time to fast. I didn't have time to read. I didn't have time to evangelize. I didn't have time to disciple. I didn't have time to baptize people in my bathtub. I didn't have time to do deliverance. I can keep going. I didn't have time to preach to people at my living room table. And God's going to say, all right, let's get the phone onto the witness stand. And your iPhone's going to say, look at the screen time. Eight hours, 10 hours, 12. You did have time, but you're the wow. product of your priorities. And like Israel, God is wow. the last on your list. That's why you give them your leftover Sunday morning. You give everybody the best of you and God the rest of you. And then you go, God, why are you moving in my life? God, where are you when I need you? And God says, where are you when I need you? Like when I'm, when you're at the grocery store and I need you to do something, I need you to lay hands. I need you to witness when your cousin's hurting and broken and lost and depressed and suicidal. Where are you when I need you? So don't keep telling God, where are you when I need you? When God is saying back to you, where are you when I need you? All right. All right, guys, I want to do here. Anybody having closing <laughs> remarks? Cause we'll go all night and I want to respect your guys' time. Cause I know a couple of you are three what? hours ahead, but any closing remarks you guys want to say, and then Vlad, I'm going to have you pray. And we're going to break witchcraft off of people tonight. I want to. I just want to say this as a as a as yeah, a, take your as, time. A prophetic, as a prophetic commentary. I just want to say this. You know, Isaiah is the only person. What well, one of the only persons that when I listen to him, I feel like I need to get saved <laughs> all over again <laughs> and repent because everything that he just finished saying, and I know it rings true for all three of us that are here, yes. that that have so with social media influencers, you know, God has allowed us to finally be at a place where, you know, uh, we, 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 we get blessed financially for what we've been doing for free for years, but we love, the, we love the Lord. So now this is a full-time job. You got to like track this and look at algorithm here. Yep. Ouch. All I got to say is, ouch. I feel like I am so convicted right now because it is so... Me too so true because i was just telling my church this and i feel as and i even told pastor mike then mike then i call you i i felt like i've been like martha in the kitchen yeah just working on a million mm -hmm. things and i just said you know what this is the main reason why i told our church we need to get on a week fasting <laughs> because <laughs> i was the first one that needed to jump in because i've been literally in the kitchen frustrated 
And then Mary is at Jesus' feet, and I'm mad at the other Christians. Like, look at Come that. They, they do half of what I do. I'm over here casting out demons. Listen, this he's the only preacher that I know that I can sit down and I go, am I really saved right now? I need to repent. Like, my God, ouch. And this is why these guys are my accountability friends because yeah. they hold me accountable. And this is what we do to each other. I am convicted and I'm ready to pray with the people yes. as well with Vlad because I myself need to get it in and yes, ask Lord. God to clean me up a little bit in this particular area of social media. Yeah, I can't wait for Pastor Vlad to open up the altar right now because I'm going to come running. You know, I got convicted right now. And I'll tell you, I was, I was reading the comments and all, but it's like, well, God, I don't have dream catchers. I don't have come sage. On. I don't have crystals. But then I'm holding my phone come and I'm like, wait a on. second. If witchcraft is manipulation, am I manipulated by this? One hundred percent. If witchcraft wow. is control, am I controlled by this? Absolutely. Wow. If witchcraft wow. is domination, am I dominated by this? So wow. how is this different than a crystal for me? How is this different my than God. How is this? You know. So I'm holding <laughs> it in my hand. I felt like the Lord's Lord, like, Jesus. this is your paraphernalia. This is wow. now. Listen, I'm just saying it, it, it's yeah. what it becomes. <laughs> So, Pastor Vlad, please lead me to the Lord. Mercy, Pastor Mark. Have mercy. Hey, I'm, Isaiah, the the I, I'm the first one at the altar here. This is going to be from breaking witchcraft to salvation for the pastors here. <laughs> Demon slayers game getting uh, born, uh, get getting reborn again. Yes. If I start manifesting I during this, feel free to deliver me live in front of 8,500 people. Go ahead. Let's go. I don't care. I think that, you know, I want us to, um, those of you guys that are watching, I think it's so beautiful to see, you know, our hearts are soft towards the Lord and our hearts are open. We all want to yeah. grow. I remember this about a few weeks ago. Um, I think about three weeks ago, the Lord started to really just, just surgically deal with me and my wife concerning, concerning specifically the phone. You know, I have, I am fortunate to have people that help me to post most of the stuff. So I don't, actually know what's posted most of the time and so and most of and most of these guys have the same thing right now but it's still you know it's that um you know our self-esteem sometimes gets connected to the numbers and you know and we like to Me see too. the impact and comments and the whole nine yards and stuff so we repent of our idolatry so honestly yeah. right now those of you that are watching um let's just open up first in prayer of repentance we're all going to just kind of come to the lord and so you can just if you are going to be praying the prayer of repentance maybe you've allowed witchcraft maybe you allowed certain things to control your life maybe you have certain things in your home right now and you're like hey i'm gonna i'm gonna be repenting right now i want you to drop number one in the chat and then if you are re-watching this also just kind of come to the lord right now with a broken heart ask him to forgive you ask him to re ask him to wash you with his blood and then we're just going to come against any witchcraft and i'll begin and then whoever will uh, end with that father we thank you for your grace wow. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for these last uh, hour and um, or two hours that we have spent, Lord God, and our heart has, has caught fire. Just like these disciples who walked with you on the road and their heart was burning. I know that even my heart is burning right now, Lord. I know that the hearts of people that are watching and re-watching some 8,000 people, that their hearts are burning right now, Lord. I know that you're burning us with conviction. I know that you're bringing a, a brokenness in our heart right now. We repent, Lord God. We, we repent together with every person that is repenting for transgressing your commandment, for rebelling against your commandment, for disobeying your word, Lord God. I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will begin to wash us in any way, shape, and form where we have allowed the, the the things of this world the cultural things that are so acceptable to become part of our christian life forgive us lord i pray for those of us who have allowed the witchcraft of the uh, domination and control and manipulation lord god wash us with the blood of jesus lord those of us who've allowed demonic objects into our life wash us lord god we are choosing to throw them away today tonight drugs all of that stuff we're gonna flash down the toilet lord god we pray lord god that you will begin to deliver those of us god who are addicted to to the phone to to social media or to movies or or to different tv shows or to uh TikTok, that you will begin to break that bondage the pornography lord god in jesus mighty name and right now i come against every witchcraft i come against yes, every yes, spell yes, that was yes. cast on you in the name of jesus christ every word that was spoken by your ex-boyfriend maybe by your mom or your dad you'll never amount to anything that you will always fail your relationships will not work in the name of jesus christ 
by the power of the Son of the Living God. I break that right now over your life in the mm. name of Jesus. I break the power of voodoo dolls or any other yes. charms that were cast against you or the, the, the dirt that they brought from the cemetery trying to bring death and incurable disease into your body. I break that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Be, be broken. That witchcraft be torn to pieces tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Those nightmares mm. and those demonic intrusions into your sleep, into your body, yes. into your relationships, into your health because of witchcraft be broken in Jesus mighty name I speak freedom and I speak a shift in the realm yes. of the spirit for your life that the warfare will turn into victory that the warfare yes. will turn into living springs of water in your desert in Jesus mighty name that you will prevail that you will win that you will rise above that headache is going right now in the name of Jesus that that lower back pain is leaving right now in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit is delivering you in Jesus mighty name we commission you right now to be a demon slayer we commission you to yes. fight back we commission you right now to resist to create an opposition in the name of Jesus yes. Christ we pray yeah there's a bunch of people in the chat saying they're manifesting so I just want to speak right to this as well as like Pastor Vlad just did we command every yes. unclean spirit to come out come out yes. of their mouth and go into the yes. abyss in Jesus name Satan you are bound you have yes. no power you have no strength the Lord himself yes. rebukes you Satan so we command right now in Jesus yes. name every unclean spirit go in Jesus name go. out in Jesus name yes. you have no power you have no authority Amen. We come against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. Come right out of their mouth and go into the abyss and never return. Yeah. Do not pass on assignments. Every spirit must go in Jesus' name. Every spirit must go wow. in Jesus' name. If you feel like you're wanting to vomit, just open your mouth. Let it come out of you in Jesus' name. Spirit of anger, depression, fear, spirit of addiction, go in Jesus' name. Spirit of lust, yeah. go in Jesus' Amen. name. You've lost in Jesus' name, every assignment, every contract, every plan has been yes. broken by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. We just pray deliverance over every person watching. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank we, you, Lord. We pray that every demon that was removed now be reoccupied by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh, yes. We pray yes. that the Holy Spirit would fill every area where every demon and every curse and every hex was removed. We pray that there'll be no empty house. We pray that every Come room on. in your house, the rooms in your mind, the rooms in your soul, your rooms in your body, be reoccupied with the presence of the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit bring new furniture into the house. May the Holy Spirit put drapes on the windows of your soul in your house. May the Holy Spirit clean and occupy every area. And may there be a complete reoccupation of every empty area filled now with the presence of the Holy Spirit now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I feel Thank the Lord. peace of God is going to rule and reign. The peace of God over your household, the peace of God over your mind, the peace of God over your relationships. May the peace of God rule and reign now. Mm. This is, we are occupying all houses, occupying all cars, occupying all spaces. This is a territorial fight, and there is a peace mm. that comes with victory. So, yes. Father, we rest in that peace. We yes. belong to you, fully devoted and dedicated to you. And now your peace rule and reign. You have dominion over our house, over our children, over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to challenge everyone too, if the Lord is speaking to you something about giving something up, about detoxing from something, obey the voice of God. Don't reason with him. Don't say, well, I'm just going to keep a gag and not in a little bit and I'll keep what I like and you can have what I don't want. Just get rid of it. It's not worth it. Whatever you need to get rid of. Some of you already know. Yeah. I won't even, I'm not even going to suggest anything because I don't even want you to think I'm suggesting it. Whatever it is that God has spoke to you, obey That's the voice it. of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, guys. Wow. What an incredible stream. Come wow. on. Amen. 85 wow. guys 8500 that's incredible i want to challenge every one of you watching do not dine and dash we all say this don't dine and dash if you are blessed tonight we did this for free if you can't afford to give don't give we did this for two hours for free and i'm going to go later on and read all the donations and stuff but please sow into the ministry the links to give are on most of our videos most of our comments um you can also give into this stream isaiahsalivar.com slash partner if you go to my website to give make sure that you hit one time and not recurring do not accidentally do recurring and i'll go on after 
after and put more links up. But yes, we have all of our links to give there. Guys, is there anything you want to plug, announce, events? Um, what do you guys got going on that you want to talk about? Mike, tomorrow, there's 8,500 yeah, people, bro, so let them know. I know. I was just going to say, I got a couple of things to do. So tomorrow, we're going to continue to expose witchcraft. We got Jenny Weaver, noon Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about her journey from a Wiccan to a worshiper. So that's wow. tomorrow at noon. It's going to be off the charts. Then this Sunday, I know you guys are driving out, flying out. We're setting it off the space at Westbury, Long Island, 10 a.m. Matter of fact, me and uh, Isaiah are going to be back to back slaying demons. And I know that there are people that are planning to camp outside overnight already. Oh, wow. So Sunday wow. is going to be crazy. Um, address on my yeah. website and on your website as well. If you go to isaiasaldivar.com slash schedule, you can get the address to this, the New York event, Pastor Mike's church. And then I think your church website and probably your website has it as well too. Oh yeah. Yep. www.v1.church is there. V1.church. Go get it, guys. I'm telling you, it's going to be good. Vlad, what do you got? Anything you want to plug? And make sure you, um, everybody, make sure you subscribe to everyone's channel. I have everyone's channel linked on my page, but if you're on other pages, just find our channels, get there. We have links in all the video descriptions. Make sure you subscribe to all the channels as well. Um, we have raised the, so if on that coast, um, the, the three, three of you guys are going to be there this weekend. On this coast, um, in the Portland area, we're going to have our deliverance conference uh, pretty much I'll put three it in days the chat of, on everyone's page. What is the website? Yeah, so it's uh, hungrygen.com forward slash conference. And so, and if you go to... Okay, I just um, put it on everybody's page in everyone's chat right there. Oh, thank you. Thank awesome. You. Um, yeah, so I'm just pretty much going to... Uh, so um, if you want to be part of the deliverance, you do have to register. We we have only one 1,000 seat um, auditorium, and I think 1,300 people have registered uh, so far. And so, but um, a lot of half of the people usually don't show up who register because some people register by faith. And so, I want to encourage you that if you are looking for deliverance, that if you come, um, that you have to come for two hours before or three hours before. It's on the website because we do a special counseling, confession, uh, renouncing before we pray for deliverance. And then the mass deliverance and the prayer line will happen in the service on Saturday, on Friday. And then the last service is Sunday, which is the impartation and for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. So this weekend in Portland. and uh, But if you're on that coast, hey, there's already deliverance taking place. So just save a ticket and go there. Pagani, you got a live stream, you got an event coming. I know you guys have mass deliverance too, and you're doing the burning, burning a bunch of witchcraft stuff this Sunday as well, right? Awesome. Well, this Sunday, we're going to be doing our mass deliverance against witchcraft. So if you're in the New York City tri-state area and you're not going to be at uh, or can't make it out all the way to Long Island, deliverance will be happening in the Bronx. You can come through. And this is what we're asking. Just bring all your witchcraft items that the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. Oh. And we're going to collect all of them. And then Dude, we're going to do it. Dude, I can't wait to see a video. That's amazing, yeah, We're going to get rid of it. But um, in December, we're going to be doing our School of Deliverance again, online mm -hmm. again. So be on the lookout for that information. That information will probably be, be put on uh all social media outlets about maybe next week right now we're just focusing on the mass deliverance but we do have an online school of deliverance that we're going to redo we haven't done one this whole year we're doing it again this upcoming september november we're going to be with you and then we're going to be with pastor vlad in seattle so we we're going to rest next month but be on the lookout for that in december and then you can just go register and just just follow us and go to our website and you'll be able to register for that and we'll have a great time with that and everyone in the chat here, there's still 7,500 of you. I want to make something clear. We're not just preaching about this. We're actually doing it. So we're not just these yeah, online yeah. guys. It's not theory. We're actually practicing it and we're living the school of experience. So we're not, it's not theory for us. Like we're going to be casting yeah. on demons this weekend. Thousands of people will get delivered yeah. all over the, from, from coast to coast, from Portland Literally. all the way to New York. We'll be driving out demons. And so get involved with what God is doing. Come out to these events. God is on the move. Thank you guys so much for being on here. This is once a month, the Demon Slayer podcast. I'm going to stay on and read the donations and talk to people and all that. And then if you guys want to also spam your links in the chat right after, um, thank you guys. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. We'll talk soon. See you guys. Love all you. All right, guys. All right, guys. Incredible. Incredible. I'm going to put the giving up and let me put the chat up as well. Why is the chat not on screen here? Restream chat. There it is. Okay. If you want to give, you guys can give. The links are there. Let me turn on my other camera because that angle's weird. The links to give are there. Venmo at Isaiah Saldivar. You can scan the QR code. Thank you to every single person that is sewing and giving into the stream. Let me scoot over because my camera. Let's see. Where am I? There we are. 
Um, all the links to give are there as well. I'm going to be sewing into these guys tonight. I'm going to, regardless of if you give on their pages, my pages, I honestly don't care. I'm going to be sewing in to each one of them tonight. So help me by helping, by helping me, you're helping me give to them as well. So whatever's coming in, I'm going to be sending them finances as well. I bless all of our podcast guests and the Revival Lifestyle Podcast episode 82. It's, it's the Demon Slayer once a month. So tonight was been amazing. Broke every single record. 8,500 plus. I'll have the exact number right when I finish, but it was over 8,500. And so we're all in awe of what God is doing. We're all amazed by what God is doing. God is on the move. So don't miss out. Don't miss out on what God is doing. Again, I'm still... I'm still shocked by it. I think they're going to be posting their stuff as well. So they will be in the chat posting links and everything like that. So you guys can get the links there. All right, guys, we're going to read the donations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone giving. If you want a monthly partner, you can IsaiahSaddlever.com slash partner, scan the QR code on screen, and you can give monthly to the ministry. We stream three times a week. You'll get 70 sermons, 25% off the merch store and all that good stuff. So I want to thank all of you that are giving and sewing. We really, really do appreciate it. We got to change the lights up there for the donations there. And then we're going to get the music going and hang out, hang out, change up the mood there amazing amazing time we've been live for two hours and ten minutes and we're still gonna stay on and read all these donations again thank you to everyone giving links to give are in the comments and the description statistically one to two percent of people that listen to our content give so for all of you that are like oh it's all about money if it was all about money we would have charged you guys tonight it's not about money it's not about income it's about outcome again one to two percent of people statistically give into these streams that listen to the streams so we are blessing people that cannot afford it and if you cannot afford it do not feel bad um don't give your last ten dollars don't feel bad don't say i'm sorry it's not enough it's it's not like that at all it's not like that at all okay here we go we're gonna read the donations now thank you anonymous uh jason man thank you emmanuel thank you hills thank you these are all the donations from my page on paypal in the comments if you're on the website giving if you're on zao giving i won't be able to see them till after venmo i'll read and paypal i'll read thank you steven maciel thank you Susie B said, I love your words. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, Susie B. Dante B said, what's up, Isaiah from New Orleans? Um, contact you. Contact me on Instagram or Facebook. I know it just takes time to get through them, guys. I get hundreds of messages a day. I'm trying to go through them all. I'm only one person. I don't have an assistant reading through the messages. It's just me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but just message me on Facebook, Dante. I can't get to everyone, bro. I apologize. Maxim says, Isaiah, the new setup is looking clean. Thank you, Maxim. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anonymous said, God bless Isaiah. Whenever you have time, say a small prayer for me. I got you, Anonymous. Um, Star Lopez said, thank you so much. I learned a lot. God bless you all and your families. Thank you, Star Lopez. Amber A, thank you. Shelby Peel, thank you. T-Dog, thank you. Walker. Albert Yanez said, thank you, Demon Slayers, for the powerful message. Thank you, Albert Yanez. Um, Lorraine said, thank you, Demon Slayers. Thank you, Lorraine. Angel Sanchez said, God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Angel Sanchez. Ellison said, receiving a prophet in the name in the name of a prophet. Thank you so much. Again, if you guys want a monthly partner and uh, so monthly, you can. The links to give are there on screen and in the description and comments. Nina um, Jerzak, thank you. Shayla Brown said, thank you so much. Thank you, Shayla. Jean Jeanza Ridley to love your message to help me with problems I'm facing in home tonight with my family amen to presence of God thank you Genia Devin and Undra say we love you guys all set us on fire tonight you men of God are in our prayers all the time it's good to be growing God's kingdom together thank you Devin Ram Lopez thank you Lori Lewis so thank you for all following and obeying God blessings thank you Lori Grace so thanks so much for the stream and praying thank you Grace Kiwi Angel said abundant blessings thank you Kiwi Ruth and Francisco Ramos so thanks for everything praying for healing thank you Kelly in Atlanta, thank you so much. Sabine, thank you so much. Say, God bless you, brother Isaiah. And I got your prayer request there. Tanya Williams, and thanks so much for the teaching. Hope, thank you. Freddie and Priscilla, so thanks for exposing so much witchcraft in the church. Um, we're going to expose the devil this weekend. Stomp on snakes and scorpions. Rise, army of God. Thank you. Be blessed with this offering. Thank you, Freddie and Priscilla. Guys, I'm not reading the chat right now. I'll read the chat right when we get done. Right when we're done here, I'm going to read all the chat here and hang out with you guys. We do this every stream. I know I might be still. I told the guys if they want to end the stream on their pages, they can, because I know we are streaming on everybody's page. So some of these will probably be ending here in a minute. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Galicia Johnson. Thank you. So trusting for provision. Nancy Truong. So God bless you. All four of your family stay with fire. Thank you, Nancy. Justice League of Demon Slayers. I was so blessed by tonight's message. Thanks, bro. Thank you, Anonymous. Someone said, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Jesus, for using these mighty men of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grace, thank you. Jordan, thank you. Appreciate you there. Marion Rivera said, so thank you for tonight's broadcast. I got your prayer request. Thank you so much, Marion Rivera. We appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. La Paz, La Paz, thank you. 
So may God bless you and your family and your, for your faithfulness, for his glory and his kingdom. Jeremy Barmore, thank you. Keita, thank you. Josh Miller said, tonight was amazing. I really felt the presence of God. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate everything you do for God's kingdom, Isaiah. And then I got your prayer request. David Ruck So you already know I'm rewatching this. So many good points of King David and our cell phone. Thank you, God. Thank you, David. Sarah Laundry, thank you. Denise Ryan, thank you. Olivia, thank you. Anonymous said, thank you. And I got your prayer request. Kayla, Janine, Isabella Rose. Lorraine, thank you. Amanda, thank you. Said great content. Catherine Victoria said, so grateful for this ministry. God bless you and your family. Tonight was amazing. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance from the new age. Thank you, Catherine. And if you guys want the shirt, Demon Slayer, go to Vlad's merch store. Go to his page. His merch store is linked on his page. Vlad Savchuk is my Demon Slayer shirt there. I got to plug the merch for him there. Thank you. Bobby Zimmerman, thank you. Ryan Watkins, thank you. Anonymous said, God is speaking through you. Ernest Castle said, Ty, thank you, Ernest. Hudson um, Pakila, thank you. Yana Gursky said, praise Jesus, thankful. Um, Jeannie Camacho, thank you so much. Okay, those are all the PayPal. If you guys want to keep giving, you can. I'm going to read the Venmo now. And there's still 5,000 of you on. Incredible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, we're going to read the Venmo now. Thank you to everyone still giving. We appreciate you. Again, I'm going to send them finances. I know a lot of you are giving on their pages as well, which is awesome. I'm going to also be sending them finances. Praise the Lord. Okay. Gitya Mungai, thank you. So I received complete deliverance in Jesus' name. Anthony said, thank you guys. I really needed to hear this so powerful. Nat G said, this message was a game changer for me. Love the stream and the platform. Mark Garcia said, thanks. Love you guys. Thank you, Mark. Cadence Psalm said, greater is coming increase. Um... Estralita Lopez say God bless you love the lights thank you so much I'm glad you like the lights I appreciate you all right here we go I'm gonna read the Venmo now let me take a deep breath here I know guys you're like why are you reading there's so many but I'm committed to it and I I want to thank everybody that's giving I appreciate you guys all right Shalita Edwards thank you Alicia Zaccio so thank you Isaiah and the crew for great teaching on witchcraft and I got your prayer request there Ryan Doherty thank you bro Bree Galvin so thanks for doing um, thanks for what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Bree. Edwin Castillo said, thanks for this prophetic power on time word. Thank you, Edwin. And for all of you that are grouchy or you're like, why are they asking for giving or money? Um, I have a prophetic word for you. Don't give. Okay. There's your prophetic word. If you're grouchy or you're angry or you don't like that we ask for finances, you don't have to give. You can just watch for free and we still love you. Richard Johnson. Thank you, bro. Nick, uh, Rick Naranjo said, Demon Slayers. Thank you. Sue Ace said, Fire. Thank you. Will Halstead said, Speechless was blessed by tonight. Thank you. Isabella Oval said, Y'all were on fire. I'm glad you're feeling better. I love the new studio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Betsy Palacio said, Powerful teaching. Thank you for these seeds. Betsy, thank you. Joanne Sanchez said, All we can say is fire. Thank you. Um, this guy said, Man's, we stand, preach, teach the word of God on YouTube. Said, This man's out here begging for money. And there you go. Get blocked. Cool story, bro. Um, Mariella Angel said, I felt the power of the Holy Spirit. God is raising deliverance this hour. Thank you. Tatenda said, Fire stream. Thank you, Jesus. Juan Barrera said, Powerful Jesus King. Thank you. Caroline Mojica, thank you so much. A great session. God bless you all. I need healing. Thank you. Ruben Salerzano said, I love the message. Stand strong, my brother. Sowing and reaping in faith. Thank you. Trisha Assis said, God bless you. Daniel Adams will be here. Revival in Malpitas, November 12th. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, if you're if you're wanting to be like, oh, they're begging for money, then you can go find somewhere else, even though you just watched for two and a half, two hours and 15 minutes and no one mentioned your money for over two hours. So you're just ignorant. Joanne Valentin said, Shades of Witchcraft, awesome teaching. Thank you, Joanne. John Stafford said, literally the most anointed Demon Slayer podcast ever. It was my favorite Demon Slayer podcast ever as well. It was the best. Han um, Hanan said, God bless. Thank you, Hanan. Catherine Alvarado said, so thankful for the Demon Slayer squad. God bless you. Thank you, Catherine. Cynthia Bird said, said, said thanks so much for giving to my missionary fund. I'm getting home to rewatch the stream. So excited on how many, uh, to see how many, how many times in tonight. Praise God. I can't wait to watch it. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you. I appreciate you. Sam Bauman. Thank you. Nicole Norton. Thank you. Yesenia Garza said, tonight was extra fire. Blessed to have all the Demon Slayers. Over 8,500 people. Let's go. Man, that was crazy. That's just crazy. All glory to God. Tori Johnson said, great word tonight, guys. Uriel Cruz said, amazing stream. Convicted me. These monthly streams are awesome. God bless. I thank God for all of you that humbly speak the word of truth. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Uriel. We will be live Friday night as well at 6 o'clock, guys. Don't miss our Friday night stream. Kina Hargraves, thank you. Alexandra Rojas, thank you. Um, Christina Stump said, thank God bless you, Demon Slayer. So much fire. Lizette, Lizette um, Caballero, Caballero, thank you. 
Marcus Reynolds, thank you. Kaylee Thompson said, thank you. Always, guys, very important stuff that needs to be heard. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Kaylee. Larissa Rodriguez said, love all you Demon Slayers. You're so full of Holy Spirit. All of you share wisdom bricks. Thank you guys often for the Demon Slayers and your families. Thank you, Larissa. Um, yes, this Kate Creation said that comment about the phones also a slap in the face. I needed to hear. I was going back and forth between social media and the broadcast right then. I went back to the broadcast is when you started speaking about God wanted me to hear that. Thank you, Assis Kate Creations. Yes, sis. Thank you. Lady Ramos, thank you for the generous donation. Say, God bless you, Isaiah. I'm so thankful for you. I've started following you for two weeks and I've been transformed in Christ. Praying for you to speak um, about my situation at home with my current boyfriend. I need so many answers. Please pray for me. Lady, thank you so much. New viewer, we appreciate you. Okay, guys. Um, that was all the Venmo. Heather Wells, thank you. So the prophetic was flowing. This was the best yet. Kelly Joel, thank you. Thank you to everyone giving on Venmo. Let me read these last few on PayPal and then hang out the chat here. Narish Limbu from the UK said, no plan of coming to England. God bless all you Demon Slayers. Next time is John Ramirez. Thank you all. Thank you, Naresh. Appreciate you. I hope I come to England soon. Yolanda said, this was fire. I learned so much. The sun is about to be, sh is about, God is about to show out. Devil's Camp just received an 8.5 shockwave. Let's go. Let's go. Daisy Lasano. Say, may God bless you and your family. Thank you, Daisy. Leela, so thank you so much. I got your prayer request. Warren and Donna, thank you. Annette Wallen, thank you. Giovanni Ellen, so thanks so much. You need to hear this word. Victoria G, thank you. Daniela Watson, so tonight was fire. I love this team. I was convicted about the cell phones versus the kid part even before the live stream. Tonight was confirmation. I've been spending more time with my kids this week. Thank you for your obedience. Motivate me. Thank you, Daniela. Mary Louise, thank you. So thanks for all the life-changing message. Jose, I got your prayer request there. Thank you, bro. I will pray for you. Okay. I just read all the names of all the people that gave on those platforms. If you gave on the website, if you monthly partnered, I'll send you your monthly partner email right after. Thank you to all of you monthly partners. Thank you to everyone sewing. Many of you monthly partner with Netflix, and I appreciate you monthly partnering with the ministry. If you didn't catch that there. All right, guys. Awesome, awesome. Uh, do you what you want it green? Hold on. Someone asked me to change the background to green. Because I'm a nerd, I'm going to do that for you because I have a cool green background that I'm gonna uh, play that I've been wanting to play here. Let me find it. There it is. All right, there we go. For those of you that asked for the green background, asking you shall receive. You have not because you ask not, the Bible says. I'm gonna miss the old setup. I know some of you will. Change is hard. A lot of people don't like change, but we had to, we had to change it. We had the old background for two years, guys. Two years, we had the old background. Someone said no purple. Oh, we just had pink on. Maybe we'll do purple right after. Maybe we'll do purple right after. All right, guys, here. I'm just looking at there. All right, all right, all right. Praise the Lord. Still going strong. I know the guys were putting their links, hopefully, in the chat. Man, the chat is going quick because I'm still on everybody's page. I probably won't stay on super long because I feel bad that I'm on their page. We're going to trim all this out. Well, they will after anyways. But yeah, love the new setup. Thank you so much. I'm glad. Because, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love the new setup. Thank you to Sienna. What do you talk about? What did you talk about? I missed the whole show. We talked about witchcraft and how it's infiltrated believers in the church. You can rewatch it right after. San Jose in the house. Let's go. I was born in San Jose. Can't believe the year's over. Me either, Jamie. My name never gets read out. I got you, Janine. Janine Jewett, I got you. There you go. Anonymous, thank you. Said God bless everyone. G Floyd, so thank you for the message. The team delivered it was so good. Thank you so much. Janine, I'm not sure why. I'm, uh, what platform did you give on? Is that what you're saying? The giving didn't go through? If you gave through Zell, I will see it after. Thank you. Zell is Isaiah Luke Saldivar at Yahoo. Thank you so much. I don't know if I'll be able to let all the giving go through on screen because there's so many people giving tonight. And I might not be able to wait for everything. Yes, rewatch re the replay after. It'll be on all of our pages. The background makes everything look more clear and your teeth look amazingly white. Thank you, mom. My mom said the background makes things look more clear and my teeth white. Thank you, mom. Appreciate you. Thanks, mom, for paying for my braces when I was a teenager. I appreciate that. Even though I had to get Invisalign again because I never listened to you and I didn't wear my retainer. But thank you, mom. Um, someone said, don't struggle with drugs. Enjoy them. Do not enjoy drugs. Boo hooligan. Drugs will kill you and they're bad. Don't do them. Yeah, my mom in the chat. How do you guys like that? Oh, there's no good witchcraft, Kelzone. It's all bad. Witchcraft is forbidden in scripture and it's bad. So there's no such thing as good witchcraft. Can you give a shout out to Flint? Yes. Shout out to Flint, Missouri or Michigan. Is it Michigan or Missouri? Raise your hand if you should come to Canada. There you go. <laughs> yeah, my mom's in the chat. She's the best. Thank you, Nico, for the content creation. Yes, Nico helps edit a lot of my stuff and make my flyers and thumbnails. Praise the Lord. The video looks extra crispy now. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank you, guys. I don't mind if people don't like me, but I do want people to like my setup. It's weird. I'm like, I really hope people like it. 
What do you know about the Issachar anointing? Um, I've heard teachings on it. What do you mean? What do I know? What's your opinion on churches trying to become a mega church? Like, they're, I don't want to say the name of the church, but they're trying so hard to become a mega church. I don't think you should try to become one. I think it's a blessing if you do become one. But I don't want to talk much about that. Do I need to get rid of my rosary? Yes, I would get rid of the rosary. Yes. Your setup is fire. Thank you, Cindy and Hobbs. Purple light squad. I don't think I have a purple light saved. Let me see if I have a purple light saved. Isaiah, did you enjoy high school while I was homeschooled? Yeah. The only purple I have is like voice activated. And look, at it's like a dance off right here. And that's voice activated. So that's kind of weird. Let me see. This one looks like it might be. No, that's just blue and pink. I don't really have a purple one saved on here. I'm going to have to download a purple one. That one's super bright. That's the most purple that I can give you there. I think that's as purple as we're going to get. Please come to Canada. Those are dope. Thanks, Revivalist Nelson. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, guys, I'll have to find a purple one for you, all you purple lovers. I don't have a purple one saved. Actually, no, these are all pink. These are not purple. I do have cop sirens, but I don't want to give anyone a seizure. I know a lot of you keep asking to do cop sirens. This one right here is voice activated, which is kind of weird. A lot of these are voice activated, and I think it's just a bit distracting, so I usually don't do it. My name never gets shout out. Well, now I'm going to shout you out. Where are you? Oh, no, I'm losing it. Someone said my name never gets shouted out, and I lost your comment. Where'd your comment go? Hold on. Jenny Weaver, love y'all. Jenny, we hit 8,500 tonight. How crazy is that? Crazy, 8,500. I think it was like 8580. Actually, I probably have an e Oh no, I'll have an email when I end on the exact number. Where are the lights from? They're on Amazon. They're called Nano Leafs, but you can also get them at Home Depot. Jenny Weaver will be on Pastor Mike's broadcast tomorrow at, I believe it's noon Eastern Standard Time. Is that right? Noon Eastern or is it 10 Eastern? What is the time? Jenny, Mike, somebody let me know the time for the broadcast tomorrow. It's noon, I believe, Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, I believe it's Eastern Standard Time. I kind of like this light. I'm not going to lie. Even though it only goes on when I talk, it's kind of cool. Noon Eastern Standard. Okay, noon Eastern Standard. Jenny will be with Pastor Mike. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, I can't believe we hit up. I can't believe we hit 8,500, guys. That's so crazy. I'm going to post a picture tonight of what 8,500 looks like. It's It's crazy. Mm -mm. I'll do the cop sirens for a second, but they do flash. And so if you are prone to seizures from flashing lights, look away, okay? Because everyone keeps asking for cop sirens. So let me just show you that it's real. There you go. All right, there we go. That's when the religious people pull me over for preaching about deliverance. I'll have to put those lights on. Oh man, now I lost my other light. I don't know where my other light went now. That's the, yeah, that's the religious people pulling me over because I keep talking about how we should cast out demons. So, there you go. <laughs> Everyone's saying laugh out loud. Yes, Bay Area, shout out to you. Are statues in homes bad? What kind of statues are you talking about? Oops, I didn't mean to leave it on this. Sorry. What kind of statues are you talking about? Are you going to stream the Chosen Season 3 when it drops? Yes. Oh, I like this one. This one is cool. I'm saving this. Yes, yes. I'll I'll stream the Chosen Season 3. Comebacks are hilarious. Thank you. When do you stop casting your demons? What do you mean? Isaiah, you're mad funny. Thank you, Danielle. I'll never forget your name, Danielle, by the way. What's your opinion on video games? Same as my opinion on movies. Be careful what you're playing. Be careful what you watch. I don't think video games and movies are any different. Man, thank you, Isaiah, for answering here. I got you, Paris. That one is chillax. I like this one, too. This one's kind of cool, huh? Somebody's chat is lagging. Hopefully not mine. Cool colors are always the best. I'm going to be on for like five more minutes. Uh, two, hour and 30, two hours and 30 minutes is when I'm going to jump off. 
even though we still have 4,700 of you, it is hard to get off with that many people on, but it's okay. Yes, Pastor Mike's, which I think Pastor Mike sells 1,500 on YouTube. All of you, make sure that you're on the broadcast tomorrow at noon Eastern. I will be in there too. I will be jumping in that broadcast. I won't be on the video, but I'll be there in the chat too. So I'm going to be supporting that as well. Jenny Weaver is our sister. She's a mighty woman of God. We're all family. He always says that five minutes. Yeah, because I'm at two hours and 26 minutes. I, I'm weird. I have to have it like at two hours and 30. I'm on YouTube and it says 1.7. Yeah, on my YouTube page is 1.7. 4,700 is total between all platforms. Like a statue of a lady? Uh, I probably wouldn't have a statue of a lady in my house. I don't know what you mean though. It's hard to say. Everyone's saying they love Jenny Weaver. I'm reading almost every comment here. Do you like American football? I don't like football, to be honest. It bores me. Demon Slayers need to be at least three hours. All right. What are you going to do when you get off? Okay, so what I'm going to do when I get off is I have to get timestamps for videos that have to be posted the next few days. So I have to go through content from yesterday, get timestamps, make some clips from today as well. And then I have to process all the streams, end the stream, do a couple things on the back end of the stream, and then I'll probably eat. My kids are probably already in bed because we went long tonight. And then I'll probably go lay down. What do you think of the God of War video game? I don't know anything about it. How's your babies doing? Good. Isaiah, see my comment. Is Curry going to be in danger in the future? I don't know. Sounds like work. Yes, yes, yes. Post a vlog of fishing. I would, but I haven't been fishing in a long time. Yeah, I would, but I haven't been fishing in a long time. So let me lighten that up a little bit. There we go. Get a little bit of light there. Mm -mm -mm. Brother, how much comes in on each stream? It depends. They're all different. But I'll tell you, not as much as you'd think. Have you seen the Risen movie? I haven't. All of our content is free, guys. I want to re remind you of that as well. You've been fishing for men. Yes, you're right. I have been fishing for men. What do you think about UFOs? I don't think they're real, but I think that the world's propagating that aliens are real so that when the rapture happens, they're going to say it was because of aliens. Thank you, Lindsay. Say, God bless you, brother in Christ. Frankie Fango. So I'll watch this tomorrow. I have something to do, but I don't want to miss the chance to support. Thank you, Frankie. Lauren V. So thanks for making these videos. I wish you'd come to the Northern States for events. Is that possible? Probably in the future, Lauren. And Anonymous, thank you. We're hitting the coast for sure right now. what Jenny say? Someone said, laugh out loud, laugh out loud, Jenny. I missed it. I got to scroll up and find what Jenny said. That was funny. My dad said, you're a Raider fan. I'm a Raider fan because I don't have a choice. I was born that way. Raider fans are like Catholics. You're just born that way. You don't know why. Only Isaiah can have 5,000 people chatting, just chatting about lights. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate you. Yeah, I'm a light. I'm a light nerd. I'm a nerd with technology. You guys already know. Um, if I make a donation Thursday, can you split it among you guys? Yes, I can. Do you like John Ramirez? Yes. No, you didn't, Isaiah. What did I say? Raider Nation. Oh, I said about the Raiders. Oh yeah, I'm a Raider fan. I I don't watch Raider games. I just I have to be because I'm I was born that way. I, you know, it's like people say, oh I'm Catholic. You're like, oh you go to church. You're like no, I just I was born that way. That's Raider fans. Someone said Vegas needs you. Are you guys are you talking about the Raiders need me in Vegas? All right. Two more minutes. I want to stay on all night and talk to you guys, but I have a lot to do, and I'm on the other guys' pages as well. So I feel kind of bad that I'm still on their pages. I don't think they care, but still, I told them they can end their pages whenever they want. Um, don't think anyone can answer that though. I'd like to see this answer. What D man? When are you going to have Bevelin Beatty? I don't know who that is, but I'll look them up. Top five broadcast hands down. Yes, I agree. All right. I love you guys. I hate to get off when there's 4,500 of you. I do love you guys. I do appreciate you guys, but I have to end at some time. Amazing night. Definitely on cloud nine. Appreciate you guys. Love every one of you. Tomorrow, 
get on Pastor Mike's page. Friday, I'll be live. Vlad will be live Thursday, I believe, at 7 o'clock Pacific. I'll be live Friday at 6. So don't miss that. Sunday, we're just gonna we're just gonna whoop up the devil. That's all there is to say. You us an all-nighter? I know I do. John Ramirez is on our team. He's he is he's on our team. When are you gonna have Jenny Weaver on again soon, hopefully? Soon, hopefully. She can come on anytime. She knows. We love Jenny. All right, love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you guys. Love you, love you, love you. See you guys in the next broadcast. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. Love you guys. Love you guys. Have a good night. Good night, guys. Thank you for being here. Have a good night.